Hello, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers and welcome to the Trip Manager. In this week's episode, I'm gonna show you how to create this incredible Trip Manager complete with unlimited trips, unlimited bookings per trip, total costing, attachments, we're gonna have a trip calendar and we're gonna make an amazing custom toolbar. It's gonna to be an incredible training. I hope you'll stick with us. I cannot wait, so let's get started. All right, welcome to the training. I've got a really fantastic application. After so long of us not traveling, I thought it's time to get in the mood for traveling, and we're gonna create a really amazing trip manager, complete with this dynamic dashboard. You're gonna track our locations, where we're going, and of course, it's gonna be complete with a map and a lot more with costs and everything. We'll be able to add trips, save trips, new trips, and delete trips. We'll also be able to add unlimited bookings per trip so we can keep track of any type of booking. We're gonna have a dynamic admin screen. We'll be able to add icons, colors, and that's gonna be used on our schedule, trip calendar here. We're gonna keep able to track everything we need on this calendar. Each individual booking type, whether it's hotel or car or flight or anything like that, can have dynamic colors, dynamic icons, and a whole lot more we'll be able to add select a different year, and we're going to be able to change out months, and we're gonna be able to do a whole lot more. So we're gonna create that, and we'll be able to add a refresh. So a lot of things going on in this application. On top of that, we're gonna add this really dynamic, cool toolbar, a custom UI toolbar. I'm gonna to show you how to create that if you've never created one before. It's so much fun. And we're going to get into that. So we've got a lot to cover. I hope you'll do stick with this. If you like this application, you can download it for absolutely free using your links down in the description. Of course, we've got that with your email or with Facebook Messenger, and we'll send that right over to you. However, if you would like to support us with this channel, there are many ways to do that, including with our Patreon account. Patreon, of course, is a great way to get a lot more than these trainings. I've got things such as all these icons, pictures, and everything that goes into it, and additional resources. We're gonna put that in our Patreon account. I've got that, I've got trainings. You'll get the trainings before anyone else. Downloadable videos, downloadable applications. We are going to have a ton of other other stuff and we also have a lot of uh, PDF code books where you can get every bit of code that goes into this in a really beautiful and organized PDF code book so I hope you join us right there on patreon I'll include the links down below all right let's get into this so we've got a really dynamic dashboard really four parts of this dashboard trips we're going to be able to select different trips and then each trip has its own booking so whether it's flights or cars or taxis or whatever even meals we can have that too and of course, on that calendar that you saw. So it's got a few different components and then we're gonna add it all together. We're gonna bring it with this little uh, toolbar here. So we're gonna do that. Now the admin is a little bit simple relatively. We've got a folder where we're storing those icons. We're gonna need to have those icons because those are gonna be available to us on our calendar. So we see there's different icons, flights and cars and hotels and all that stuff. And of course, also in our admins, we wanna keep track of the travel documents folder. These travel documents, when we go into the trips, we can store unlimited. We can add different documents if we want to do that, or we can add lots of different things with that. So we have a lot of, if we wanna add a picture, we can simply add a picture or any type of a document to that. So, you know, documents are really important. So each individual booking can have individual documents, right? So we can, and of course, those documents can be JPEGs, can be Word, or any type of thing. So I think, let's see, we've got one here. This one's got a, a few different documents, right? right here, I think the Paris taxi here. This one's got a few different ones here. So we've got a PDF, we'll be able to preview that PDF. We will also have a JPEG, or we can even do Word documents. Word, we can preview inside there. And we're gonna be able to open them up or we're gonna be able to delete them simply by just clicking on this little icon here. It's gonna open up whatever application you have. In fact, if it's a PDF viewer, we'll be able to open that up. So I've got a little PDF viewer here for my Fox at PDF. And you can open that up so we can see that as well. All right, so we've got a whole lot of features in this application. I'm gonna to try to go through it step by step. If I do tend to talk a little bit fast, which I often do as I get excited with these applications because I love bringing them to you each and every 
every week. Of course, just go ahead and slow down that video, but I'll try to go slow and I'll remember. Oh, I forgot one feature. Showing the itinerary, we'll be able to show itinerary and we're going to be able to print itinerary. So there's so many features, I, as you know, I often forget. So you better stay tuned, watch the whole application. You never know what features might pop up during these applications. And of course, I'm going to explain every line of code with you. Some of these I do from scratch, but on a complicated one like this, where it's a, there's a lot of code, I'll go over step by step. That'll save us a lot of time as these training videos are well over an hour, sometimes two or even longer. So this one will probably be maybe about two. Let's see how it goes along. All right, so let's step into the code and let's step into the workbook and see just what we're doing, right? We've got the ability to create a new trip, which is going to clear everything out. When we select on a trip, it's going to load that trip. There's no bookings associated with unless we select a specific booking. If we want to add a new booking, it's going to clear it out and we can add any booking we want. So let's say we want to add a hotel in, let's just say a city or any a city. So we could do a hotel in Nevada if we want to, right? And then we can set a booking type here. We've got a whole list of booking types that comes from the admin. We can put the confirmation number here if we have a confirmation number. We want a from date, right? If we got a pop-up calendar, another feature I forgot to mention, right? So we want to put in a specific from date, we can. And we've got a time, right? If we want to set a check-in time, we can do a check-in time anytime we want. Let's set a reasonable check-in time, nice and early in the morning there. And then, of course, when we're going to add check out of that. So let's say we want to stay there a few days, and then we add a checkout time or something like that. An email, website, if you want, location, address, city. So we maybe we'll do Las Vegas, one of my favorite cities. And then we'll do, we can do, this is good for state or city or county. So we'll just do Nevada. Okay, so now we've got it down there. So now we've added something onto this Europe trip, although it doesn't really make sense to go from Europe to Nevada, but you get the point, some notes. So we can save that booking and it's gonna automatically save it. It's gonna put that down at the bottom. So you see, we now have this, we go from Rome all the way to Las Vegas. So that'll be fun. And we can add documents, of course, as I just showed you. All right, so great. So now in our dashboard, of course, we are going to show that. We've got that ability to show the trips and something as we went over before. Okay, great. So we've got that. That looks really good. And of course, if you want to delete that booking, all we need to do is click delete. It's going to delete that booking and that booking is gone now. So really, we got some really cool features with this showing the itinerary. What that's going to do is going to hide the first set of columns. Take a look at this when we hide that itinerary. We've got columns visible from G through O. Okay. And then we got a set of buttons. When we show that itinerary, it's going to hide those columns. It's going to show U through AC. Then it's going to also determine all of those uh, stops that we're making for that particular. And then it's going to put them in order. And then what we're going to do is be able to print that itinerary to print to that default. So we can easily print the itinerary. It's got confirmation numbers, the type of it, and the name, and of course, the from and to time along with the to date and the to time, the cost and the notes associated with that. Also inside our itinerary, we've got a trip total cost. So we know the total cost of that trip. Right, we're going to use that. And of course, we want to know. So if we're going to go to Hawaii, so that's a really cool. I'm also going to show you how to put this really cool map feature in. So, and, you know, if we want, this is going to be inherent to Excel, which is great. Now I'm using the newest version of Excel in this case. Usually I use an older one and I almost always, almost never uh, use features. But this one, I really like this feature. So this feature will come on just newer versions of Excel. So that map, but everything else will be fine. Okay, so it's going to map out. We're going to put show you how to put these icons. It's going to be very, very cool. Back to the trips. So, of course, we can add and edit and update those bookings as we like. Now, the best thing to do is we want to make sure that we want to separate everything into proper clear data. So inside this, I've got a list of our trips. Now, we saw the three trips. We've got a trip ID that's unique to each trip a trip name accordingly, and then the from date, the to date, and then just some trip details. So the trip is very basic. And now for each individual trip, remember trip ID one, two, or three, we've got a list of bookings. Now that's gonna go into separate table. If we go over here, we see we've got a booking ID, which is also unique to every single booking. We've got a trip ID, which is unique to that trip, trip number one, trip number two, or trip number three, right? Booking name, when the name of that booking, what is the type, the confirmation? So all those fields that are associated with that specific booking are stored in this individual table. So everything that you saw here, and we're gonna use data mapping as we often do, which if you haven't seen that before, I'll go over it. And basically what that's gonna do is map these fields, J11, M11, O11, J12. It's gonna map those individual columns with the individual fields back on our trips. So if our booking name is J11, our booking type is M11, 
and our information here, confirmation here is 011. So it's mapped that over. Okay, so we've got those trip bookings. We've also got some travel documents. Now we noticed when we were able to add trips, of course, we can add in those trip documents, right? We can add in some booking information here if we want. So we can preview that or we can you know, delete it. So we also want to store uh, on a list of documents that are going to be attached. And that's going to be right here called inside our travel documents. And that's going to be here inside the trip. So according to that, we've got an individual trip ID. We've got the booking ID, the name of the document, the date, the type, and the path that's going to, we're going to be able to create folders and then a row that's associated with that. And we're just going to use one little pivot table on that. But for the most part, everything else is relatively simple, straightforward. So we're going to go into that. Okay, so what I'd like to do is I'd like to start out with the trips, right? That's the central part. How do we create new trips? And how do we delete trips and so on and so forth? Also, some information here on our columns here. We've got information. I want to know the if I select a trip, I want to know the ID that's associated with that trip. So notice that ID is going to change from one to two to three as we select down on those trips. Uh, and the, the row that's associated with that trip. I've got some named ranges that are going to help us in this. Let's take a look at some of those named ranges and go over the ones that I have created for this. So I want to know inside, uh, let's start out with the trip name here. Let's go for the trip. So we've got a trip ID here. Now the trip ID is a dynamic named range for all the trip IDs. And we also want to know the trip name. That is a dynamic named range for all of our trip names. And then also I want to know trip cities, right? And that's going to be the individual. We'll go over that in a minute as we go over that. So that's going to be something different. And so that is for trips. But also what I want to do is I want to go over some of the booking names. So if we go back into the formulas and named range, we take a look inside the bookings, we're going to see we have a dynamic booking ID. And that's associated with all each individual booking. It's going to have a brand new one. And I also want to know the trip ID that's associated with every individual book ID. We're going to put that into a named range. And also the types. I want to know the booking types, right? So all of those, that's going to help us with those dashboard. And we're going to go into that each individually. So that's some of the basic named ranges. Because I need to use that named range, trip ID, to determine the row. So if I know this trip ID is one, I want to know what row it's associated on. If we look into the trip list, we see that trip ID 1 is located on row 4. So all we're going to do is use a match formula. We've done that a lot here. And of course, we're going to use B1. We're going to use the match, and we're going to add 3 because our first one starts on row 4. I also want to know the next trip ID. We're going to use the max formula plus 1. Maximum of all of the trip IDs plus 1 is going to get us the next available one. Because when I create a new one, it is this new trip ID that's going to be used for the next one. I also want to know what row has been selected. If I select a different row, we're going to use conditional formatting. And it's going to be based on that. So let's take a look inside the conditional formatting and see what rules. Okay, of course, that's going to be based on B4. If we take a look at B4, the row that's associated with B4, I want to color that that dark turquoise with the white font. And also, I want to color the alternating rows for even rows and odd rows. If there is a value that's contained, I want to color the even rows a little bit white and I want to color the odd rows a very light blue and we're going to get this that's how we get this alternating color here so we're going to do exactly the same thing for our bookings I'm not going to go over that but basically we have a selected row or selected rows located here on B10 okay I've got the same conditional formatting for odd and even rows so basically this one's the selected book is located at B10 when I make a selection when I make a selection change from E5 on down I want to make sure that there's a value inside E if there is a value I then what do I want to do is I want to load the details of that trip I want to put in the trip name the from date and the to date and I want to put those in right here Okay, so how do we do that? Well, that's going to be based on the selection change event. So let's get into that and take a quick look inside that. So we're going to go into the developers, Visual Basic, Alt F11 to get you there as a shortcut. And we're going to go into the code here. Now we take a look at the code inside here. We're going to focus on this sheet, our trips sheet. That's the one I want to focus on. And we're going to focus on selection change event, worksheet selection change. Okay. And what I want to do, there's some individual shapes that we want hidden automatically. If I select on a 
specific document, I want some certain shapes to show up. So let's take a look at this right here. And you see this group here. There's two groups of the Let's zoom in a little bit so you can see basically one's going to allow us to view the picture and one's going to allow us to delete that picture or attachment, right? So that those two shapes are in a group and that's called the document group. I only want that to show up if the user makes a selection change inside there. So anything else I want that to be hidden. So the first thing what I want to do anytime is I want to check if there's a selection change. If that group is visible, I want to hide it. Okay. We're going to do that. I want to make sure that that's also hidden. So let's take a look inside here the code and take a look at that. If the shapes document group is visible, then hide it. Shapes document group visible equals false. We're going to hide that. Also, we're going to use saved fade out messages. When I save that trip, I want to fade out message. This is called trip saved is going to fade out automatically, right? I'm going to do the same thing for the booking, right? If I save that booking, I want another fade out message to appear right here called booking saved. That's going to let the user know that the booking was saved and it's going to fade out. Now, I want to make sure that those are two shapes. I want to make sure if for any reason those two shapes are visible which they should not be only for a short time I want to make sure to hide them so we can do that with these two lines of code if trip saved message that's one of those shapes the name of those shapes it's visible then hide it we're gonna do both with the booking saved shape and the trim so those two shapes that you just saw we're just gonna make sure that they're hidden because we only want them to appear on a temporary short-term basis right as it's being saved once it's done and that's it I also want to make sure that that calendar is hidden now this is some code making sure that the calendar the calendar we we only want to show up or that pop-up date picker that you saw only when I select a date. If I select anything else, I want to make sure it is hidden. So that also has to, has to be hidden. There's some code that we're not going to get into that's going to make sure that it exists. Okay. And if it doesn't exist, it's going to take it from a hidden sheet here and it's going to replace it because this is a shape here. So if it's deleted for any reason, it's going to go into a hidden sheet. Now, if we're going to, I'm going to unhide these sheets. There's a hidden sheet called Cal pop-up, right? It's going to take, there's some code. It's going to take this Cal in this hidden sheet and it's going to put it directly over back into there so it's going to replace it so we keep this sheet hidden i'm just going to right click and hide it sorry it's off the screen there but right click the sheet and hide it so this code right here is going to help us with that that selection change code here we're going to set the calendar we're just checking to see if the calendar if it doesn't exist we're going to run a macro that's simply going to replace that then also i want to know if the calendar is visible we're going to hide it that's all and then i also want to make sure if the target count is large is greater than two then exit the sub that means if the user makes a selection change on more than one cell at a time then exit the sub and that really helps remove any errors that might exist that can happen while we're selecting okay now what we're going to do is we're going to focus just on that selection change that i had mentioned e5 through e99 that's the on the selection of trips of course we want to make sure that e contains a value right if e doesn't contain anything right there's nothing we should do right so we want to make sure that e contains a value if it does then we want to run the macro that is going to load that trip so then what i want to do is i also want to take whatever row the user selected I want to place it directly inside B4 right here. So that's the first thing. And then what I want to do is I want to make sure that we can set an ID, right? Once I know the row, I also have this hidden ID located right here in column D. If we take a look at this, we see inside our formula bar that that's one. If we take a look at this, it's two and three. Now those are hidden automatically. We can do that with some formatting here, custom formatting. So we see the custom, we're going to use custom formatting to hide that. And what is that? It's not going to be sample. We're just going to use three commas, three semicolons here, one, two, three, and that's going to automatically hide that so that we cannot see it. So when we select on here, going back in here into the custom formatting, we now see that there's custom formatting, those three semicolons, that is going to hide it automatically. Okay, so that's kind of nice, but it's there. You can see it if we, in the formula bar, you can see it, it's there. Or if you double click on the cell, you can see it as well. So what I want to do is I want to take that ID, that is the ID that's associated, whatever's in D, and I want to place it directly inside B1. So we do that with this column here. B1 is equal to whatever's in D and the target row. We're going to set that trip ID. Then we're going to run the macro to load that trip. That is the macro that I'm going to go right into now. And that's going to be located right on our trip macro. So trip macros, if I go up, we have load list, save update, and we're going to start out with just the one that I sewed, and then we'll go back up. Okay, the first thing what I want to do is I want to make sure that we have cleared out 
all of the cells associated with all of the booking cells, all the document cells, and all the trip. Once we've done that on two lines of code, I want to make sure that if there's any preview, any document preview, for example, this particular shape here, let's say not that one, let's find a shape associated with that, which would mean a specific booking. On this particular one, we have some bookings. This is always going to be called doc preview. This little shape here is called doc preview. As I load it, I want to make sure that there's any shape that with this name gets removed. If it's not there, it could create an error. Therefore, I've wrapped an on air resume next and on air go to zero. So we're going to delete, remove any existing picture that exists. Okay, I also want to make sure that there's a row associated with this, a calculated row using that. If this is empty for any reason, we cannot load it. That is the row that's associated with our trip. So that's very important, and we need that here. B2, if it's empty, then please let the user know to select a correct trip. Okay, we're going to turn off application screen updating to false. That's going to make things a lot quicker. Then what we're going to do is we're going to determine our trip row. It's based on B2 into a variable. I'm then going to run just some basic data mapping from column 2 to 5, and we're going to bring in the values, and I'll show you what that means. So basically, all we're going to do is we're going to run inside our trip list. I've got some basic from 2 to 5 here. B to 5, we're going to run it. So we know the row, so in I5, we're going to put this. In K5, we're going to put this. And in N5, we're going to put this. And in I6, we're going to put this. So that is data mapping. It's going to take whatever value on base of whatever row, and it's going to place it directly inside here, inside I5, inside K5, or inside N5, or inside directly I6. That's all we're going to do. And that's exactly what this line of code will do right here. Add an update application. Okay, then what we want to do is I want to load the booking list. Now there's another macro which we're going to get into in just a moment, booking list. So that means I want to know all of the bookings associated with this trip right here. All those bookings, right? I want to load that. So that macro is going to do that. Great. So that is up to trip load. Okay, then we're going to, of course, we're going to turn on application screen updating. Okay, we'll be going over this macro soon. But first, we want to cover all of the macros associated with this trip. So let's go right back up and start up at the top. First thing what we want to do is load the list of trips, right? If I run this macro, we do this every time we save a trip. If I make a change to that, if I make a change and I say I want to call this Europe 22023, right? And I save that trip, I need to make sure to update this list here with the correct name, right? So this list, so there's a macro that's going to run. When I make a save that trip, it is this macro that's going to run and automatically update this list. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing. So first thing what we want to do is with the trip screen, I want to clear out the selected row. The first thing what you want to do is clear out that selected row because we don't know what order is going to be. In. So B4, that selected trip row is going to be cleared out. I also want to clear out any anything from all the ID is located in column D all the way to E and down. So I want to clear everything out. So from D to E99, we're clearing all the previous trips and ID numbers. Okay, once we have that, I also want to focus directly on the trip database, right? The trip database is where we're going to load all of them. So if we take a look inside our trip list, this is the one we want. I want to load all those trip names, right? And I want the trip IDs. And I want to make sure that it has a two date. So we're going to bring it all in here, these unique lists just in here, just to make sure that we have everything we need. So we're going to determine the last row, right? With the trip, the last row, we're going to clear all the contents of any previous results right I want to make sure that we have uh, the last row and then what we're gonna do is in case there's no data if the last row is less than three we're gonna exit this up we're gonna run an advanced filter because I just want to make sure that we have the two date right and why is that important why is that important well because we do have a filter on this another feature I failed to mention to you again I want to include completed trips or not right if so if I select here I unselect we don't have any completed trips but if I select here I want that same macro to run so if there's a, a trip that maybe we didn't want let's put this back maybe a different year let's change this to 2021 right that would be completed here so 2021 and let's change the year on here right go back and put this in back in history a little bit so bringing this back a year and putting that right about here let's see March 31st okay so now I'm going to save that trip and oh, let me update that and put the right date on here 2021 and now what we want to do is save that trip 
Okay, and now we see only two trips appeared, right? The, the ones in the past didn't, but if I include the, the older ones, they're gonna appear automatically, right? So it's really great. So what I wanna do is I wanna know which ones are in the future, and maybe I only want to filter out only those in the future. If they've been completed, I don't wanna show them. So we can do that very, very easily, but we do need some criteria for that. So inside our trip list, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the two date. If I know that I've decided that we are not going to show any older trips or completed trips, I'm going to unselect this. Now we have a specific cell that's tied to the values. So when we format that cell, we see that the link is B5. And we take a look in B5, and B5 is false. Okay. Now what we want to do is we need to basically take some criteria here, and we can do a little bit of a formula. So basically, if B5 equals true, then I'm just going to show anything with a two date, right? Anything regardless. However, if it is false, I want to show anything greater than or equal to the current day. And that's for the two date, right? So any trips that have a two date greater than or equal to the current date, right? That means past anything that's completed is not going to show up. And that's how we get this criteria here, right? So it's very easy. And we see that it's been stored here. So that's how we can easily see that we have those trips. We can show both of them. So we're going to use that as our criteria. So our criteria is then going to be N2 through N3. And that's just what we have in our advanced filter. So we're going to take all the data from A3. Notice the header was A3. We're going to use our criteria from N2 to N3. And we want those results coming in through P2 and Q2, P2. Now we only want the ID and we want the trip name. And that's what we have here. P2 through Q2, we only have the ID and name because it is the only the ID and the name that we want to, to bring back into our trips and put them in D5 and down. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to determine the last results row based on column P. If the last results row is less than three, then we're going to exit the sub. Otherwise, we're going to bring over that information right here inside from trips D5 through E plus two. We need to add two because we're bringing that in to row five as our first, but it's coming from P3, right? So we know we need to increase that. And that's all we need to do. Okay, so that's how we load the list. But how, how, how do we save or update that? And of course, that is the macro that's tied to when we save or update. And when I click this button, whether we're saving a new one or we're updating an existing one, we want it to show up. Okay, so how are we going to do that? Well, Re relatively easy. The first thing what we want to do is we want to make sure that we have the fields required. I want to make sure that there is a trip name, a from date, and a to date. I want to make sure that those are all filled in. If any one of those are empty, then of course let the user know. So that's the first thing we're going to do. If I5 is empty, K5 or N5 is empty, then let the user know to please add a trip name from and to date before saving the trip. And we're going to exit out of the sub. I also want to check to make sure if there's any duplicate trip names, right? I don't want to have duplicate trip names. I want to make sure that each trip name is unique. Now we can check that with a simple formula, right? And we're going to have a red formula right here. And so that formula, we're going to wrap that on if error. So I need to differentiate. I need to know, is this a new trip or it's an existing trip? So we can separate that. Now we know if it's a new trip, B2 is going to be uh, empty. We know that because there's going to be no calculated row. And now that we know that, we can take a look back inside our duplicate trip name if B2 equals MD, then of course, we're going to focus on we know it's new. Then we just need to check to see if that same name exists inside the list of trip names. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use the match formula. Now match formula. Now I know if there's an error with this, meaning it's not found, right? If I5, looking at I5, I'm looking inside the trip name. If it's not found, it's going to result in an error, right? So what I want to do is if we're going to check for an error, if that error is false, right, meaning that there is a match, there's no error, right, is error equals false, that means there is a match. If there is a match, we're going to put true, otherwise we're going to put false. Okay, so this is for if it's found, if, it's an, if it is a brand new trip. However, what if it's an existing trip? Then what I want to do is I want to look this up and I want to see if it is found on row five. If it is, great. If it's found on another row, then we know there's a, mat, there's a duplicate. So we can do that. If we're looking up the trip name plus three, right? We're looking for the match. If we're if we're looking for that row, and then plus three means this is the row that's associated with it. It's found on this row. If it does not equal B2, it means it's found on another row, then we know there, there's a duplicate. 
then we'll put in true. Otherwise, it's false. Now, if there's any error, we're just going to put false. That is all we need to do. So anytime this is true, all we need to do. So if I put in Hawaii here, we know it's a match, right? We know it's found in another row. This is going to go to true, right? We know that because it is Hawaii's already been used. So automatically, it's not going to let us save a trip. It's going to say this trip name has already been used. Please create a unique trip name. So that's all we have to do to just simply check for that duplicate, whether it's a new. And we could do that here. If B6 equals true, the name has been used. So that's all we have to do. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to determine is it a brand new order or is it an existing, actually new trip, right? So if it is a new trip, we need to do a few things. If B2 is empty, as we've discussed already, we know it is a new. First thing we need to do is determine the trip row. The row is going to be the first available row inside the trip database. That's the list of trips. Now we're going to use an XLUP plus one. Then what we're going to do is simply take that next trip ID that calculated through the max formula that's located right here, and we're going to place that directly in B1. I'm also going to take that same next trip ID that we placed in B1, and we're going to place it in the column A. We're going to put that directly inside A right here in the next available row. So that's what we're going to do right here. B1 is going to take on that next trip ID. Column A along with that new trip row is going to take whatever's take on whatever's in B1. That's all we need to do if it's an existing, if it is if a new trip. If it is an existing, all we need to do is just extract the trip row from B2. Everything else, we're going to use data mapping just as we did on load, but this time it's going to be in reverse. From columns two to five, we're going to take whatever is in that range, what's located on row one using data mapping, row one, remember that row one, whatever's in I5, whatever's in K5, or whatever's in N5, and we're going to place it directly in here. Now, when I say I5, uh, N5, or K5, right, that means it is going to be whatever's in I5 here, whatever's in K5 here, or whatever's in N5 here, and we're gonna place directly inside that specific specified row here, here, and here. And that's how we use data mapping. So that's all we need to do. Now what I wanna do is I wanna run the macro. Once we save it, right, we're gonna run the macro to load that list. We'll go over that list. That load list, trip load list, is what we went over here. And that's just gonna reload the list in case we change the name. So re or add the new one, reload trip list. Okay, so now what I wanna do is once I've loaded the trip list, right, how do I do that? So let's take a look at this. Let's say I change this back to 2021, right? Where, where it should be, right? What I want to do is I know that I, I want to make sure it's selected. When we load it, when I save it, it's going to clear it out. I want to make sure that 2021 gets loaded again, right? If I change this here to big trips, big trips, right? And then I want to make sure that that name gets selected again. So I need to make sure I'm going to look for the row wherever I find this, and I'm going to make sure it's selected. So I'm going to take whatever row, and I'm going to make sure that B4 contains that row, right? I want to make sure it's selected again. So we can do that with the following code. Okay, first of all, I'm going to get that trip ID that's going to be located in B1. Then what I want to do is I want to determine the trip row. How do we know the trip? No. Well, we also know we can use the names match, but we also know the IDs are located here, right? If I know the IDs are located here, ID 1, 2, or 3, and I know that we just saved 2, all I need to do is look for the ID using the find. If it's found in row 2 here, it's hidden, but it's found, right? If I change that format, it'll change. It's here, we see the two up here. I'm gonna look for what row, whatever row it's found on, including six, and I'm gonna place that six directly here. So that's what we're gonna do. We're going, we've got the trip ID in a variable already. We're gonna set the selected trip row. It's gonna be based on D5 through D99. We're gonna use find, and we're gonna use trip ID. Now we're gonna use XL formulas. This is very, very important because notice it's hidden. When it's hidden, either with a hidden column or with a custom format like it is, it's not going to be able to be found if we're using XL value. So we must use XL formula and that will find it. And what I want to do is I want to extract the row once it's found. If it's not found, it could create an error. Therefore, we wrapped it in on air resume next and on air go to zero. If the selected trip row, that selected trip row doesn't equal zero, then I'm simply going to take whatever it is and I'm going to place it directly into B4. That's going to trigger the conditional formatting. And then we're just going to run that fade out message. That fade out message is simply going to take that shape, the shape that we have. If we take a look inside here and we view that shape, right? I want to see all those shapes. We look at the selection pane here and I want to take, we don't need to look at that calendar, but we scroll down here and we can find that shape, that trip saved message. 
or here, the booking save message. So it is this shape that I want to show. I want to fade that shape out called trip save message. This one shape is called booking save message. So I want to fade those up. So when I save that trip, I want to show that message. I want to slowly fade it out to give the user a look. And this is going to be exactly the same thing with the booking save message. So when I save that booking, oh, we got to select a booking to save it. When I save that booking, I want to make sure that that booking message also fades out. So we can do that with this line of code. So it's very simple. We're going to take basically that shape and we're going to use a loop and we're going to change the transparency lighter and lighter or increase the transparency as we go through. And then lastly, we're going to hide the shape. That's all we need to do on new trip. That's the same macro that we run when I click new trip. I want to clear everything out and we want to make sure that we want to clear all the selected trip rows, the selected booking rows. Everything else gets cleared out. So we're going to clear out a bunch of cells using the clear contents. We're going to delete, of course, any document preview. And we're going to select I5. We want to make sure that I5, of course, is our trip name. And that's going to allow the user to put it in. Okay. All right, great. So what that's going to do is clear it out. Now, trip load, we're going to do very similar. We're clearing out all the cells. We already went over that macro here. Trip delete, very, very simple. When we delete a trip, we want to do just a few things. It is very important that not only if we're going to delete, I'm not going to be uh, create a new trip. Okay. If I create, let's call this test trip. Okay. Let's add in a brand new date here and we'll go to date and we'll add in a brand new date. Okay. So test. So if I add, if I save that trip, of course, that trip's now going to be here. Notice that there's four. Notice that four is displaying because that's not custom format, right? We have not set the format here. Just to go over it again, because it's really important, a format here, three semicolons is going to hide that in the custom here three semicolons. So one, two, three is going to hide that and it's always going to be hidden. Okay. So we can see that there. So we know that that's trip four. If I want to delete that trip, what do I need to do? I want to make sure that I'm deleting all the bookings that are associated with that. So if I have a test booking here and I've got a new booking type, let's say I added this is a tour and we've got a confirmation and that tour is going to start on here and it's going to go to a different date here. That doesn't make much sense, but fair enough. So I want to save that booking. I also want to delete any bookings that are associated with that trip. If I add a document, I also want to delete any documents that are associated with that. So we have to be able to do that to make sure that we're saving that. Okay, so not only do we need to delete the trip, right? Not only do we need to delete row four here, but I also, excuse me, row seven, ID four, but I also need to delete any bookings that are associated with it, which is this booking here. Notice we have a booking ID of four, the, the booking ID of 29, the trip ID of four, trip ID, you can see it up here, trip ID, booking name. So this test, so this also has to be deleted. I also, inside our travel documents, I need to make sure that this gets deleted here, right? So when I delete it, we have to make sure that we're doing all of that. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to do that with this macro here. So first of all, we're going to give a confirmation to make sure that they do want to delete the bookings. If they say no, of course, we're going to exit out of the sub. And then what we want to do is I need to determine has it been saved or not, right? If I do a new trip, right? If I do a new trip and I put in test here, test here, and I delete that trip, it's going to be very easy. So let's sign that macro properly. I probably changed the macro name. So what I'm going to do here, just select on this and hold the control down, select on both. We're going to look for that trip ID. So we're going to sign the macro. And then trip delete is the one right here. That's the one we want to assign. Okay, so first we're going to get the confirmation message. Are you sure you want to delete this trip? If we say yes, then what I want to do is I want to delete it. But if it has not been saved yet, we can simply skip deleting all the rows because it, we didn't save that. And so that's what we're testing out here. How do we know if it's been saved before? Well, of course, B2 is going to be empty if it has not been saved. So we can use that. If B2 equals empty, then we can skip all of this here and just go to not save. And then all we need to do is simply run the macro that's going to clear out the contents and reload the order list. Okay. However, if it has been saved, I need to delete the individual database rows, both for trips, both for bookings, and of course for documents. So that I'm going to need to delete. So the first thing we're going to do is determine that trip row inside a variable. It's going to be located in B2. That's going to be our trip row. So our trip row is associated with that. And then of course, we're going to delete that entire row in the trip database. Okay, that's easy enough for that. But what about our bookings? For our bookings, we can have multiple, multiple bookings, right? So if we have multiple bookings, I'm going to need to delete more than one, right? So if I test this trip out and I add an additional booking here, and no, let's say add an additional booking here, and then just put flight 
anything is going to be fine here and then i'll put in a date the booking types or house that doesn't make so much sense a house shouldn't be a flight at least a little bit of making sense even though it's test data and then uh, what i'll do is just give it a specific time and that's going to be fine so i'm going to save that booking so when i have more than one bookings right i need to make sure that both get deleted both these get deleted now i know what if i delete row 32 first then it's going to change what row this is. So I need to make sure that I always delete row 33 first, then I delete row 32. So what we're going to do is we're going to provide an advanced filter. And what that's going to do is that is going to let us know where those bookings are associated. So if I take a look inside the booking list here, I want to know which ones we're going to be deleting. So let's uh, take a look inside these two bookings here. We want to show those names which are going to be right here. This is what I'm looking for here. So what I'm going to do is I have these. I know the rows. If there's rows associated with that, and we're going to bring those in and make sure that there's rows. So once we run that, it'll give me the rows num row numbers. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to reverse it. I'm going to put the highest row first and the lowest row second. So I can delete the highest row first, then delete the second. So that's how we're going to do it. So here's what we're going to do. Bookings, we're going to determine the last row. If it's less than four, we're going to go to not save. We're going to run our advanced filter being an A3 through U. And what that's going to do is going to run an advanced filter for all of our, right? I want to make sure that U is included. All because we need that row. So A3 all the way to the last. And I want to put those results. What is the criteria? Well, the criteria is going to be only for a specific trip ID. It's going to be based on this trip ID. This is simply linked to B1 in our trips. Here's our criteria. We want those results to come right here from A2 through AC2. That's where we want the results to come. A2 through AC2. Once we're going to, then what we need to do is determine the last results row. If the last results row is less than three, that means there are no bookings associated with that trip. If the last row is less than four, that means there's no need to sort it. We can skip the sorting. However, if there is more than one row, I do want to sort, and I want to sort descending. I want to put that highest row first. That row is going to come directly from column AC right here. So if I run this macro up to this point right here, right, and then what we're going to do is we're going to see that list, right? Actually, I can run the full macro. The data will remain in the results, which is fine. So AC, and I'm going to run that our range is going to be AA through AC. We're going to do the exactly the same thing. Then what we're going to do is we're going to loop through those results starting from three to the last row. I'm going to determine that database row based on what's in AC3. And then what we're going to do is we're going to delete the entire booking row here. We're just going to loop through and do all of that. We're doing exactly the same for travel documents, identical, except we're just using, we're going to run our criteria. And this, our travel documents, a little bit different. Our criteria is going to come directly from J2 through J3. That trip ID is going to be located here. We're going to have those results come directly inside N through the P, right? Those results are going to come directly from N2 through R. The R is fine, okay? R is fine. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to determine the row here. This is located in N, the highest number. I'm going to sort of based on N3 this time descending, right? Because that's where our row is located. And then we're going to loop through and delete those results. Then we're going to load it. So that's all we have to do. So again, let's take a look inside here. If I delete this trip with these two bookings, delete the trip. Are we sure we want to delete it? Yes, right? It's going to delete those trips, clear everything out. The trip's gone. The bookings are gone. And inside the trip list, we see that uh, uh, trip ID 4 is gone, along with the trip bookings here, 4 is gone. And the travel documents here, 4 is gone. Okay, great. So we know how to delete delete that i'll take a quick look back inside right so we just went over delete so what we're going to do is simply just deleting those associated clearing out all, all the forms and fields by running the macro trip new and then loading the list reloading that list because we just deleted it great now let's take a look at the itinerary right and take a look inside when we want to show the itinerary we see what we've got let's take a look inside the trip let's add in a specific itinerary where we have Good. What I want to do is I want to basically run another advanced filter. I want to load all this information for the specified trip. So inside this, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be loading in all that information using a very specific trip booking. So once we have our trip booking, I want to load 
all of the associated information for a specific trip ID. So we've got an itinerary results. This time we're going to run the same criteria Y2 through Y3. And then what we're going to be doing is we're going to have all that information come here and then inside, bring it inside there after we run that. So there's two macros that are associated with that. The first that we're going to do is simply we're going to be toggling between that. So if we take a look inside our module itinerary macros, we're going to find two different macros here inside this module. And then also we're going to have one called itinerary view or hide because it is the same macro that we're going to be using for both hiding the itinerary and showing the itinerary. So all we need to do is check to see if there's a column. For example, if column G is already hidden, we know that we should unhide, right? If we, let's say if the G is visible, we know we should show the itinerary. However, if G is hidden, we should hide the itinerary. So we can use column G to determine that or any column that's hidden. So we're going to do just that with the trips. If column G entire hidden equals false, means it's not hidden, it's, it is displayed, then what we want to do is we want to show the itinerary. So we're going to take a trip group. Now a trip group, I've created a group for all these shapes here, and we're going to call it the trip group. So I've grouped them all, and we're going to call that trip group. I want to hide that group. I don't want to show that group. I want to display another group. I want to display something called itinerary or itin group. This is the group I want to display. So we need to show and hide buttons accordingly. So we can do that here. So we're going to the trip group. We are going to make that visible equals false. We're going to hide the trip group. We are going to then show the itinerary group using this line of code. We're then going to hide columns G through T and we're going to show columns U through AC. So that's simply going to hide these columns, G all the way over, and then we're going to display U through AC. After we do that, all I want to do is just refresh, run the macro, which we're going to go over next, called itinerary refresh. However, if we're going to be hiding, we're going to do exactly the opposite, except we're not refreshing the itinerary. We're simply going to be showing the trip group, hiding the itinerary group, and then reversing the columns showing and hiding accordingly. That is all we need to do is simply view and hide. It is the same macro tied to both of these buttons. It is the same macro tied to this button and this button. Next up, I want to be able to print the itinerary. I want to be able to print it to whatever our default printer is. I'm using Snagit, so I want to default that. If I want to do that, I want to make sure that also when we print it to our default, that we're going to print it on our landscape orientation. And we can do that with just a few lines of code. So printing the itinerary, and I probably should have put that. Let's go ahead and put that up here. This here, I'm going to put this mark. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to clear that out. And I'm going to go into the itinerary, and I'm going to place it right here. So printing the itinerary right here. I like to have all these. So we have three macros, showing, hiding, printing, and then refreshing. So all we need to do is simply run this macro, trips, print out, true, false. And that's going to print that itinerary. Relatively simple there. Let's get rid of this one here. I have two macros that are associated with the print. This one I like better because this is going to mention it better. So I want to make sure that it is this one that is tied to that button and the icon associated. That's what I thought. Two different macros. This is the, I believe is the one that we're using because it is correct always. But I'm going to double check it, making sure I'm going to right click this, holding the control button there. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to assign the macro to this just to make sure that we have the right macro assigned. Itinerary, print itinerary. That's the one I want. That's the macro that's going to be used. And we're going to click OK. So it is that macro that we're going to go over along with the refresh. So first we'll start off with the refresh. And basically with refresh, all I want to do is simply run an advanced filter based as I mentioned it to you. However, inside the trip bookings, I'm going to certainly start to clear. I want to clear all the information here. But more importantly, what I want to do is clear any information here inside that because if I'm going to be clearing it, so we're going to clear all the way from U through AC. We're going to clear that inside the trips. U6 through AC, we're going to clear all the existing itinerary. Now we're going to focus on the bookings. We're going to determine that last row inside the bookings list. If it's less than four, we're going to exit the sub. From A3 to U, remember we're going to run that criteria Y2 through Y3. Inside our trip bookings, our criteria is automatically set based on a formula Y2 through Y3. Those results are going to come here, AF through N, and then we're going to bring them down. So AF through AN is going to wear our results. We're going to check the last row through AF. It's less than three. We're going to exit the sub out. And then we're simply bringing over the results. That's it for refresh. Relatively simple. Printing the itinerary. 
I'm going to determine once we've brought in, you know, I need to determine the last row of our results. So the last row we can use here because that's a required field under U. So U is going to let us know. So the U99, this is going to get us the last itinerary row, last row. Once we have that last row, as long as it's not less than six, if it is less than six, let the user know to please add some booking details before they print the itinerary. We're going to set that page area. I want to set the print area. I'm just going to start off on U4, which is that header all the way over to AC in the last row. That's going to be our print area, right? Once I have that, I also want to set the orientation. Page setup orientation equals landscape. And then we're going to print it out. That's it. Simply making sure that we are always going to align with that page setup print area that we've just set up here, okay? We don't want to print outside that. That's it. That's all we need to do for both the itinerary and the trip. So what about the booking macros? Booking macros is relatively simple, right? With the booking macros here, we've got a few ones here inside there. Of course, we are going to be uh, saving the booking, new booking, and deleting the booking, and also loading that list up. Every time we save a booking, we want to make sure to reload the list to make sure if there's any changes, they automatically get updated. So let's go over those macros now. So back inside the VBA, we're going to focus on booking, the module called booking macros. And that's going to go into order and this time, booking macros. First thing we want to do is load the list, right? Anytime we want to reload this, of course, we need to make sure that we're clearing out the existing. Keep in mind that we do have those IDs, those booking IDs hidden in column F. So we want to make sure we clear out F through G and all the way down. So with the trips here, F10 through G and down, clearing the contents of those existing bookings. Next up, we're going to primarily focus on that bookings, right? I want to know all the bookings associated with a specific trip. So we want to make sure that we're going to focus on some criteria. Again, link to that trip ID located in Y2 through Y3. I'm going to bring in all those bookings from A8, AB, bringing in the advanced filter. So we'll move a little quicker because we've been on these before. Getting the last row and then making sure it's less than four, bringing in that advanced filter, Y2 through Y3 is our criteria. A2 through B2, having those results, checking the last row of those results, making sure that's less than three, and then bringing them over here. That's all we need to do. It's very, very simple unless we go there. Okay, so continuing on, right? If there's, if it's less than four, we're just going to skip and go to no trip data. Okay, what I want to do now again is I want to make sure that if I refresh that list, I want to automatically know what one is selected, right? If I run that macro, that macro, it's going to clear. Let's say this slip row is 10, right? So I'm going to delete that selected row. Now what that's going to do is going to delete the conditional formatting here, right? But what I want to do is I want to make sure that that whatever we, if we save that book and we refresh it, I want to make sure that that 10 gets selected again. I need to look um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for this booking ID that's located in B1, and I'm going to look for it down here. It's right here. It's one. It's located in B10, right? But if I select a different one, right, I want to know what row this is booking ID 3. I want to know what row it's found on. And once I find that row, I'm going to place it directly inside B10. Okay, there's two ways we can do it. I, I, I've shown both ways. Okay, so if we can look for the booking ID or we can look for the booking name, right? So if I, all I do is take the booking name here, look for it in this list. And once we find that name here, take that whatever row it's been found on and put them on 12. Okay, so that's, so we have two ways. Remember, two ways. We can look for the booking ID here or we can look for the booking name here. Both of them are just fine. So that's all we need to do. So we're gonna use booking name here. Booking name is in J11. We're gonna, whatever's in J11, we're gonna put it in a variable. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna determine the selected row. We're going to look for it on G. Here we can use values because those are visible, right? If we're gonna use IDs, which are hidden, we use formulas. So I wanna explain the difference. We're gonna look for that name, that booking name in G10 all the way on down. I'm looking for that name. I wanna know what row. When it's found, I'm going to take that row. We're going to put it directly in here, right? So that's all we're going to do. If the booking row is not zero, then what we're going to do is going to take that selected row and put it in B10. I also want to set that booking ID. Now we have to set the booking ID in B11. So I want to make sure that that booking ID is located right here. And that ID is located directly in F, right? So whatever is in F in that row, F in that selected row, take that booking ID and put it in B11. That's how we know we got the right booking information. Okay, great. Well, what about when I want to save it? Of course, when I decide I'm going to save that booking, I want to make sure that there's any changes or anything else that we put in here is going to be automatically saved, right? So anything we have there, it's a long address. I want to make sure that that is because when I reload another one and I reload that, I want to make sure that that change data automatically gets saved. 
So again, we're going to use data mapping just like we did here. And then, but here we have inside our bookings, we've got data mapping here, all the way up here. All those fields are mapped. So saving it's relatively simple, even if we have a lot of fields. Want to make sure that we do cover the required fields first, right? We can't save it if we don't have a name, we don't have a booking type, or we don't have the from date. And I've decided to do, if we do a new booking, let's do a test, I'm going to automate that. So if they don't put in any type of to date, I just want to automate automate that automatically. So if I save that, notice notice that to date automatically went there, right? So I want to make sure that the to date gets automated. If it's blank, then the to date is going to be same as the from date. That helps keep the record. So J11, M11, and J12 are all required. And that means that is a booking name, a booking, uh, booking type, or a from date. I want to make sure that those are all required. If not, let the user know to put in those values. Next up, what I want to do is I want to determine, again, just like we did with the trips, is this a new booking or is this an existing booking? New bookings automatically have the booking row empty because there's no booking ID. Existing bookings always have a row associated in B12. B12 will let us know whether it is an existing. So if B2 is empty, we know it is a new booking. So a new booking, we do some different stuff. So what are we going to do? We want to determine that book row, that booking row, first available row on our booking screen. Okay. And then B11 is going to take on that booking ID. That next booking, we're going to use the same formula that max is going to be located right here inside B13 using the max formula. We're going to take that ID and place it directly inside B11. So from B13, we're going to place in B11. So we're going to do that right here. I'm going to take that same booking ID and put it in column A. And I also want to put the row in column U. Right. So the those are the things we do for new. So inside that booking, a gets the booking ID, column U gets a formula that's going to display that row right here. It's going to be that formula. So those are the only things we do for new bookings. If it's an existing booking, all we need to do is extract the row from B12. Everything else is going to be the same. Here is where we're going to automate that front, that to date. If N12, this is our to date, if it's empty, then what we're going to do is we're going to take our uh, N12 is simply going to be whatever's in J12. J12 is our from date. So we're going to set the to date as from date if it's blank, if empty, if empty, okay? So that's all we just to make sure that we have a required to date. Next up, we're going to use data mapping, which we've been over before. We're going to loop through all the columns and basically map that data, whatever is located in these fields here inside our booking here. We're going to make sure that they get put directly in the correct row inside our trip bookings here. That's all we need to do with data mapping using this data mapping in row one. Okay, great. So that's it. Then we're going to simply run the macro that we went over to reload the list of bookings. And we're going to run a fade out message. That fade out message is exactly like the one we covered, except this time we're focused on booking save message. Everything else is the same. Booking load, relatively simple. We just want to make sure that we have a row associated. If not, you know, I want to make sure that when we're loading, when we select it, how do we know that there's a row, right? If I make a selection change, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that ID that's located in column F, and I'm going to place it directly inside B11. I'm also going to take the row, and I'm going to place it directly inside 10. Then then I'm going to run the macro to load. Let's take a look at that. That's a selection change event. So when we go inside the trips and we take a look inside the selection change event, this time we're focused on column D. So if we take a look down up here on bookings, so column G, sorry, on selection of bookings, column G, we're making a selection. We want to make sure that G contains a value. We're going to take that row and we're going to place it in B10. Remember, we're going to take whatever's in F, that's our booking ID, that hidden booking ID. We're going to place it in 11, and then we're going to run the macro to booking load. That's it. That's all we have to do to get to this macro. This macro, we're just going to make sure that we do have a row associated in B12. Once we know we've got a row, we want to make sure to put that into a variable called book row. We're going to turn off application screen updating to make things faster and turn it on before the macro ends. You can use data mapping simply to now load it. It's basically the reverse of this data mapping, right? It's absolutely the reverse. This time, this time we're taking this information that's located in these cells and we're placing it in the database, the bookings database. This time we're taking information from the bookings database and we're placing it directly inside these cells that are located here. Everything else is the same. Booking new, very, very similar, just clearing out a bunch of cells and selecting this. Keep in mind that if you run this macro and you're not on the current sheet, you will get an error. Right? If I try to go to trip list 
and we have select and I try to run this we're going to get an error why is that because we cannot select a sheet that that is done and now if you tend to run this you can run a check to make sure we cannot select a sheet if we're not currently on it if we're on that sheet then I try to continue with this macro, it'll run without issue because we can select it because we're actually on that sheet, right? We're already on the trip sheet. Okay, deleting the booking sub, so what is this? This is very, very simple. If I want to delete a booking, then all I need to do is determine the row that's associated with that. Let him know, are you sure you want to delete the booking? Determining the row, right? Making sure if it's empty, that means the booking hasn't been saved yet. We can go to not save. We can skip deleting that row and go down here. But if it has been saved, we're going to extract that row, right? And then what we're going to do is we're going to delete that entire row. Then all we need to do is clear everything out by, by running the macro bookings new and reloading the list, right? And that's easy. So if I decide I want to delete this, deleting the booking, we're going to get that confirmation, yes. We're going to clear all the content out. We're going to reload the list, and we're deleting the row that's associated. All right, great. What about documents? Now, documents, we've gone over. That's everything in bookings. We're going to move over to documents. Book documents have a module. Okay, what I want to do is I want to refresh the documents. I want to be able to add a document. And how do we refresh? Well, refreshing the documents, as soon as I click on a specific cell that's going to load that, and let's get out of that cell here. Okay, once we load it, right, we want to make sure that we're going to be able to add a document, right? I want to load the list of documents, loading this list by clearing it out. And basically what I want to do is I want to know all of the documents that are associated with this specific booking, right? With the booking of booking idea three, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to run an advanced filter as we always do. We're going to base it on this booking ID. I want to know, of course, trip one and booking ID, but booking ID is sufficient enough. I want to know all the documents that are associated with booking ID three, right? If we take a look inside here, we see that we have booking ID three. We have three different documents. I want those three to come here. Then I'm going to bring that information with an advanced filter. So let's take a look at that. And inside the VBA, we're going to document refresh. The first thing I want to do is clear the contents of all the associated. I want to also delete any preview shape that might be there. We're going to determine the last row of the documents. The last row is less than four good. We're going to run an advanced filter based on that criteria that I just mentioned to you. I want to know that criteria K2 through K3. We're going to have those results come through N through R, right? N through R. And we're going to check the last row, N. If there's less, you know, no data. Then we're just going to simply bring, I want to bring over the database rows. Those database rows, I need to know what row they're associated, right? That's why we bring the row over. I need to know the database row four, five, and six. It's very important because if I delete one of those, I need to know what row to delete. So I'm going to bring those database over. And I'm going to bring those right into here. Four, five, and six, I'm going to bring in column B. So that's one line of code. The next line of code, I'm going to bring all the information in here. So here in B1 equals B B21 through B in the last results row plus 18. Remember, our results are going to start on row 3. Our trips is going to have to start on row 21. So we need to add 18 to compensate for that difference. So adding that database row in column B. And of course, that's going to come directly from N. Once we have that inside our travel documents, we need to know column coming to column end there then what we want to do is we'll bring in the rest of our results name date type and path bringing those in directly inside our trips name date type and path and bringing them in here that's all we have to do to refresh it is this macro that we automatically load when we load a booking we're going to run that so the booking macros right loading that list it is that loading the the booking specifically this one here booking load it is this macro that we run to load those travel documents automatically so that gets loaded in automatically okay but what if we want to add a document well if i add decide i want to add a document i need to know what folder to put it in what i want to do is i want to create a documents folder here and if we take a look at my desktop i want to create a specific document called travel and then inside here I want individual folders to be created for every single trip that we take. Inside those folders, I want to put any documents that are associated with that. So the first thing is what I want to do is I want to set a specific folder where our travel documents are going to go. It is that folder that's located inside our admin screen called document folder. It's located right here in E6. And we give it a name range called document folder. I need to make sure that that folder exists. So we're going to take a look inside here. First of all, we want to make sure that we have, we don't want to save any type of documents unless I've actually both. I want to make sure two things. 
I want to make sure that that trip is saved, meaning B2 has to have a row. And I also want to make sure that the booking is saved, meaning we need to make sure that the booking has a row. So both B2 and B12 have to contain value. So we need to check for that first, making sure that we have a save trip. B2, if it equals empty, let the owner to save that trip. Why is it important? Because I need to assign an ID for that document. I need to sign a, a trip ID and I need to sign a booking ID. Very important, so we wanna make sure that we are actually saving them, okay? So B12 must also contain a value. Once we know that both the trip and the booking have been saved, we can then move on to getting that information in. So the first thing we need to do is get that document folder and put that in a variable called doc folder, right? And make sure your variable name is different than your named range, that can create some issues, okay? So I've made sure they're different. And we're going to add a backslash onto that. Okay. Then I want to do is I want to run to check if the document folder is empty, or maybe we have this particular admin folder. We don't need both of those. If the directory is empty, or we the value itself is empty, let the user know to please select the document. And we're going to run the macro. Press browse for travel documents right so that's going to br run browse which is the next macro down so but if it is not empty right what we can do is then just run another check to make sure if it's still empty even after we've instructed them then what we're going to be doing is just exiting the sub out and then if it's not then we're simply going to reassign that variable just like we did up here okay we can also set the trip name based on what's located in I5. I want the document row, right? I need the first available document row because we're gonna need to save that inside the travel document. So I need to know the first available row inside the document. Once I have that row, I'm putting it into a variable. I need to know the set the documents. Here we're gonna run application file doc. I wanna browse for that document. So we're gonna use the document file application file dialog. That document is already dimensioned as a file dialog. Okay, great. So with the document, we're going to give it a title, right? We're going to let, uh, let them search for any type of document. So therefore, we have a, just a period with a wildcard on either side, meaning uh, any type of file, allowing multi-select false, right? If they don't select anything, we're going to skip that. We're going to set the file name being the directory, means just the file name along with the file extension will be located in the file name. I want the entire file path in the file path variable. Now, what I want to do is I want to, to see if it's already in the correct folder. Right? It, I want to create it. I want to put everything in that folder. Right? I want to put these dot wherever they're coming from, I want to put them in specific folders. But what if they're already in the folder? If they're already in the folder, there's no need to move it. So what we're going to do is we're going to check if the file path is equal to the selected, meaning the file path that where we want to put it is the same as where it already is, then we can go it's already in the correct folder. We're going to skip this and go down to here. If it's not in the correct folder yet and we want to put it there, what I want to do is I want to check to make sure that that folder exists, right? We want to create folders for every single trip. So what we're going to do is we're going to check if the directory the document folder and the trip name if it's equal to empty means that that trip folder doesn't exist yet we're going to create it using make directory and that's going to create the folder for the trip now i'm going to look in that folder if that document already exists if the name of that document already exists in that folder then i want to delete it right maybe we want to we have an updated itinerary or updated something so we want to replace anything with the same name so we're going to run a check if the file path directory does not equal empty that means it exists with that name and we should delete the current one before before we move it over. So that'll kill it, deleting if it exists. Okay, then what we're ready to do, we're ready to copy that file from wherever they've browsed for it into the brand new folder that we created. So we can do that file copy, the selected, which is the original path, to the destination path is where we want to go. So it's going to copy that file to the new path. Okay, great. So now what we've done is we've placed that all, we've gotten all the information, we've put it in the right place. But now what I want to do is I want to add that information in. So I'm going to take that document row and we're going to put it into B19, right? So I want to also know when we have a selected folder, B19 is the selected document row. I want to put that. As we select a different one, I want to make sure that the conditional formatting changes automatically. And I want to put in B19 that document, that row there that's associated, that'll trigger conditional formatting, just as we did with trips and just as we did with bookings. It's gonna put it right there. So B19 is gonna take on that. So we know that because it's gonna be the first available row. As we add new ones, what is the first available row based on column I? So we're gonna do that. So the document row, which we've already done up here, document row based on I, that first available row, the last row of the value, plus one is that first available row. So that's gonna go in B19. Now what we also need to do is we need to, of course, add that information to the database row. 
We've got our travel documents. Now what we want to do is we want to add the trip ID, the booking ID, the name, the date, and the path, the road, all that information in. So that's what we're going to do here. A is going to take on the trip ID. B is going to take on the booking ID. C is going to take on what? C is going to take on the document name, the type, and the path. And that's going to be C through F. C through F is going to take on I through L, right? So we're going to take automatically add that information in. So that's going to add everything in. We need. We've already added up here. I think I skipped that. Sorry about that. B is going to take on. This is inside the trips. The database row is going to go into B. The document name is going to go into I. J is going to take on the date K, the current date. K is going to take on the file extension, which is simply the right, looking for the string in string reverse. We're looking for that period. That's going to get us our file extension and then our file path. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to place all that directly. In, so we're placing the document name, the date, the extension, and the path. So I'm placing that. In. Then all we need to do is take this information, copy it or bring it over using value to value, and bring it directly inside here from then C through F. So that's what this line of code here was. For. So now inside the database, so this is inside the trips here. This is inside the database. So we need to add both. Database is going to take on the trip ID, the booking ID. Then C through F is going to take on I through L, I through L, right? That's going to be the name, the date, the document, and the type, and the path. Then lastly, we're going to put the row into column C. I need to know that row because when we load, when we bring that over, I need to know what rows associated with those documents inside the trips. I need to make sure that those rows come here. All right, great. So we have those. We saw how important that is. Now what I want to do is I want to preview that document. Regardless of the document type, whether it's PDF, whether it's Word, or whether it's a picture, I want to be able to preview that document. And I want to have that preview show up directly inside here. So we can do that with the following lines of code, right? Once we add a document, we're going to run a macro called document preview. And it's going to be right here and I'm going to run that. So if there's any existing document first, we're going to delete that. We're going to wrap that in on and resume next. If B19 empty, B19 is our selected document row. It's very important, right? I need to know B19. I need to know 21 because I have to extract the path. That path is located in column L, right? So B19 is critical that I have a row. If B19 is empty, then please select the document to view. You can exit out. Document row, we're going to put that into a variable, B19. The file path is going to be into L, whatever is in L. If it's empty, we're going to exit the sub. We want to make sure that we have a correct file path. And also what I want to do is I want to make sure that we've checked it. So if we're going to run the directory of the file path, if that's empty, we're going to make sure maybe the path itself is incorrect or maybe the document was moved or deleted. Also, I want to set the file type based on column K. That's very important because pictures are viewed differently or are open differently than perhaps objects such as Word and Excel and PDF, right? So that's very important. So if it's a picture, we're going to set that file type. We're going to extract that file type from K. And then file type is if it's a PNG, JPEG, if it's a picture type, all we need to do is simply use dot pictures, dot insert, and then insert that file path. Give it a specific name called document preview. However, else, what if it's else? It could be, let's say, a Word. Even Excel would work. Excel, you can do even do Excel. I don't know why you would. Or PDF, right? Those are the standard ones. So in those cases, what we're going to do is we're going to insert an object, an O-L-E object. And we can do that with a file name. We're going to set the file name to that file path. We know what to open. It's based on that file. We don't need to link to it. And we don't need to display it as an icon. And we do need to give it a specific name. I want to make sure that the name that we're going to give it is exactly the same name as if it was a picture. The reason it is is because both types of objects, once I know that, that means I can size and position it regardless of the type. Regardless of the, whether it's a picture or whether it's an embedded Word, PDF, or Excel document. Uh, object, I can then size it and position it accordingly. So I'm giving them the same name. So now we can work with it. Whether it is a Word, PDF, or a picture, I can then work with it using dot shapes preview. First thing we're going to do is lock the aspect ratio. We don't want to get that width or height contorted at all. We want to make sure. We need to set some limits on height. So if the height is greater than 80, we're going to set that limit to 80. If the width is greater than 120, we're going to set the width to 120. We're going to set the max width and we're max height. I also want to set the left position. I want to center that left position. I want to center between columns and an O. So I need to know the width of that column. And I also need to um, subtract the width of whatever is that shape. So once I take that width of the column minus the width of the shape, and I divide that by 2, that means it's going to put its equal distance on both sides. I want equal distance between column and an O, equal distance on both sides. That's going to place it there. So we're going to simply add the left position of an N21, setting the equal distance. 
We're going to do the same thing with the top. I know I'm moving quick. we got a lot to cover here. So remember, you can watch this as many times as you want. Slow down the video however you want. Okay. So we also want to center it vertically, right? I want to make sure. So this time we're going to focus on rows 21 through 26. I want to know the height of those rows. Then what I want to do is I want to know the height of that particular shape. And then that shape, we're going to simply subtract that in two, that would difference. So again, we're going to use that, the top position this time. We're going to determine the height of those rows. And we're also going to determine the height of the object. We're going to subtract out and we divide that space by two. And that's going to set that top center position based on the top position, adding that to the top position of N21. Now we're just going to make sure this is helpful for Word documents. We're rechecking the top position because Word documents kind of a funky thing. You're going to have, sometimes with Word documents, they'll change, right? So you see it looks all right. It doesn't look great, right? I, I don't, you know, and then you'll see this change. It does. It, regardless of the word, for some reason, because the reason is that it's inserting it into an object and it wants the the end user to actually use this as an object, right? If it was a bigger object, right, you could actually use it, right? So you can actually double click on it and, you know, use it, right? So keep that in mind. Now it's going to double clicking, it's going to Word, so it'll open it up. Okay, so keep that in mind that it, that the shapes will change on Word. You know, I've had some funky luck, but this helps. You'll Even after a few seconds, it might change by itself. So we're going to just ensure that the top position is set. We're just basically, we're going to recheck that top position. And that's really only for Word documents embedded objects uh, pdfs don't have any problem pictures no problem so keep that in mind you'll see some funky things going on with the word documents there all right great so that's it for the preview that's all we need to do what about if i want to open a document right all i need to do is click this view button and that's going to open it directly into word very very cool right so how do we do that there's a macro assigned to this little i button here of course you want to get these icons along with all the icons that we're using that's going to be in our resources on our Patreon. So I hope you'll join us on our Patreon. So document open, very, very, very simple. We certainly need to make sure we have a selected row. Without that selected row, we don't know what to open. And of course, that hyperlink is located at column L and that selected row. We're going to put that into a variable called doc row. Then all we need to do is determine that file path. That file path is located here. We're going to use this workbook file hyperlink. That's going to open it up regardless of the type of document, whether it's a picture, PDF, Word, Excel, whatever it is. It'll open it up, most likely, as long as you have that default program set on your computer. Great. What about if I want to delete a document? Deleting a document, again, all we need to do is make sure we have a selected row. We know that B, column B, contains that database row. That's why it's so important. I need to know what row to delete, four, five, or six. So as long as B contains a value, we know what to delete. So putting that inside a variable called document database row. And then using the delete command. So it's going to delete on the travel docs, deleting that entire row. Then, of course, I want to delete any shapes that were, were connected to that using, or actually this should be delete, not visible, probably should be delete, right? So dot delete here, right? Because I want to delete it. And when we select it, it'll create a new one automatically. If it doesn't exist, it could create an error. And therefore, I'm wrapping an on error resume next and on error go to zero, okay? So I want to make sure that we're going to do that. And then, of course, we're going to reload the documents. This in itself, this macro in itself actually would do that. Probably don't need that. Because this macro, eh, don't need that. Because this macro does that already, right? If we looked at the document refresh here, right? We see here, document refresh, we see it already has. So we don't necessarily need that, right? We've already got here. No need for that. Okay, very good. So we've covered that. Now I like that. All right, good. So we've got our documents covered. So we've covered everything in this screen. We've covered the trips. We've covered bookings. We've covered adding, previewing, and browsing documents. Cool. And we've covered the itinerary. So we've gone a lot far. Now let's focus on this calendar, this really cool calendar. Okay, I'll be going over just the main part of this. Now, if you want to go into like a lot of detail as far as the previous and how this calendar was created, I'll include some links, but we've got a lot of scheduling applications. So I'm not going to go over the calendar creation because this is already big, but I want to focus specifically on the the one that's going to refresh this, right? Our calendars, it's, you know, we've got, I've gone over a lot of the formulas. Of course, you can download this for free and take a look at these formulas. But I want to focus on just the macros that are associated. And that's in this module called calendar macros here. And the main one I really want to focus on is this called calendar refresh. Now, we've had a lot of things that are going to help us. And hopefully, the repetition that we've done a lot of things with this because it's so, and also when we select on here, it'll go directly to that. I think I forgot to tell you. Another feature I forgot to mention, but very, very easily. So that means when I go select on something, it'll go to that. See, even I forget all the features that I add in here. So when you click on something, it'll go directly to that booking. Very helpful. 
Okay, so what I want to do is I want to focus. If I go next month, of course, there's nothing. I don't have anything scheduled in that month. Previous month, this March 22 is where everything's scheduled and nothing here. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that I want to know all of the bookings that are associated in a given month, right? Now, to do that, we need to assign. We know this month start is going to be located inside this. Let's go ahead and view the headings on here. And so it's going to be located here inside B4. So B4, I've given it a name range called month start. This is the first day of the month. Notice that this is going to change as we change the months. B4 is going to change. It's got a name range called month start. So what I want to do is I want to... Basically, I want to know all the bookings associated in a given month. And we can use, of course, my favorite advanced filter. So we need to use this. This is the advanced filter we're going to use. And so basically what I want to know is from date, anything greater than or equal to the month start and, and a to date that is less than or equal the end of the month. Or, this is or, and an and or this, or I want to know a from date that's less than or equal the end of the month and a to date that is greater than or equal the month start. So this is a little bit confusing, I know, but make sure that it's this that will enable it. Now we don't need those date formatted, right? That's not necessary. In fact, I prefer them not to have a formatted date because this number, this original number, which is a date, will work regardless of the date formatting or regional settings you may have on your Excel or your computer. So it's very important when running advanced filters to use these numbers here. So what this is going to do is going to provide us with anything with a from date in the month or anything with a to date in the month, and it's going to create those results here. Then what we're going to do is we're going to loop through those results, and we're going to place shapes on that, on our calendar based on the date, that the from date. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this sample shape here, and we're going to duplicate this sample shape here, and we're going to duplicate it for every one. We're also going to add an icon. And now those icons are all here, right? So we have a bunch of icons here, and those icons are going to be very, very helpful, when we, and they're automatically going to get created. So that means if I delete all these icons here, Right? They're automatically going to get recreated because they're based on the icons that I have in a folder. So if I refresh that folder and we take a look, we see that those icons have been recreated here automatically. How do they come from? Where do they come from? Well, they come from the admin screen, of course, and a folder. Right, So I've, I've associated these icons with the booking types, hotel, hotel. So these icons are the same icons that we're going to be using inside this folder here. So if we take a look inside the icon folder here, and we see that this, all these icons, of course, they're available through Patreon. The names of these icons are exactly the same names as they are. And we've browsed, we know the folder that they're located here, because that's located here and called icon folder. So what I want to do is I want to loop through all these icons. I want to create an icon. I want to combine this file path with this icon name, and I want to create an icon inside this calendar here. I want to create a list. And once I do that, what I want to do is anytime I find this icon, if, for example, if it's a city tour or if it's a flight, I want to take this icon and I want to put it directly with a flight. So these icons are associated. A hotel is associated with this. A tour is associated with this. Skiing is associated with this. We've even got a skiing icon or flight or taxi or anything like that. It's going to be associated with that. So I want to make sure that the icons get recreated. So what I want to do inside the Mac, I want to delete all the icons first, and then I want to recreate them. I want to add them in based on all the icons here. Okay, And I also want the colors of those based on that. So if I change Right. If I change, let's say if I want the airplanes to be red, right, then I go back into the calendar and I refresh it, you're going to see all those flights change to red. Right. So now we have flight, flight to Paris, it's all in red. So we want the colors also dynamic based on whatever colors we set. And we can use this really cool pop-up color thing. We didn't even get to that. Just so many features. I get confused. I can't remember. I created these in three days, but it's like three days of a lot of work. So I don't always remember every feature. So that's why you got to stick with these trainings till the very end because you never know. In fact, I never know what features are going to come up as we go through these. So make sure, I know they're long videos, but there's a massive amount of value here. When I select year, I want to make sure the year changes and refresh the schedule. So that year is connected to something. If we go into the format control, we see it's connected to B11. So if we take a look, I've got a list of years here. So if we take a look at B11, we see it's one. That's associated with year 20. 2022, right? So I know it. I also want to know the selected year. We're going to use index. I've got a named range called years. 
Here's our named range, right? So if I know, if I'm going to index our years, and I want to put whatever year has been selected, I want to put it right here. All I need to do is simply index the years, and I want to base it on B11. It's going to put that year here. If I know the month, which is dynamic, and I know the year, then I know that month start date because it's simply going to be date of the year, of the month, and the day one. So we know the month start date. And we know the month end date too because it's simply going to use the formula EO month, and that's going to be directly inside our formulas here using EO month, EO month here. It's going to be the last day of the month. Okay, great. So let's continue on to this macro as we move through it, right? We've got a bunch of dimensions. We'll go through these as we come up. The calendar, first thing what I want to do is I want to set this booking change to true. I don't think that's going to be important for this training, but it could be in the future, so keep that in mind. B1, well, I'm going to clear any selected booking. I need this. I don't need either. Some ideas that I had. One of my ideas that I had my, was going to be putting, um, I wanted to put some information here on the selected booking, right? I like have a column here with the selected, but don't need it because we select it, it's going to go right to all the details. So there was no need to put anything else in there. It was really, really easy. Okay, so that's why maybe we would have had the booking ID here. I was thinking about the selected booking ID and booking row here, and then having some information show up, but it wasn't necessary. I found an easier way, so we get rid of that. All right, so what I want to do is I want to, once I refresh it, of course, we need to delete all the icons and all the shapes associated with it. So if we take a look, at it's called booking group five, right? Group is basically the five is associated with the group with the booking ID, right? So this is booking. If we take a look inside this, we see that that is booking trip ID one, right? And booking ID here too, right? So if we go into the trip calendar, the one we just selected booking two, this is this one here, flight to Paris. That's the one. So notice it's called booking group two. So what I want to do inside the shape here, booking group two, if I extract that, we're going to make sure that we want to make sure that when we create names, that we create them for each shape and we easy to delete it. So the first thing I want to do is delete every shape, every except for the sample, except for the sample. So every shape. So basically we're going to use, so this is called sample book shape. So I want to include every shape that includes the full word booking, the full word booking. So that includes this shape booking group or this shape booking five or even the icon. What's the icon called? The icon is called book ICO5, book ICO5. So, but we know that the group in itself contains booking groups. So that's sufficient for us because the group, it's been grouped together, contains booking. So we can do that. So what I'm going to do is for each booking shape in the shapes calendar, I want to basically clear all existing booking shapes. I want to clear every single one of them out. So to do that, we need to do any shape, including that group, that contains the word booking. We're going to delete it. I also want to delete those icons. Remember the icons here? I want to delete those too because I want to refresh that list in case the end user decides to make changes or add new ones. So we're going to delete all those icons as well. So using this icon, if it's greater than zero, then book shape, delete, delete those icons. Once we have them all deleted, we can then move on. So what I want to do now is, is basically take all those icons from the admin screen and bring them over just as you saw. So I'm going to set that icon folder based on the icon folder in the admin screen. That's going to be into a string variable. If it is empty, we're going to let the user know to make sure that we get the icon folder so we can browse for it. If you want the same icons as me, join our Patreon. I'll make sure we get those over to you. Patreon link will be down below. So we're going to set that icon folder in a variable. And if it's still empty, even after we've asked them to browse it, we can go to no icons. It's simply going to go there and skip all the way down here. If it isn't empty, what I'm going to do is simply loop through. I want to assign icon numbers and I want to give them each an individual number. Very important, right? So this one's the first one's called icon one, the second one's called icon two, and so on and so forth. But basically, what I want to do is I want to loop through all these icons starting in row 10 all the way down to row possibly 26. So we're going to loop through those looking for that. So we're going to run a loop 1 through 17. Why 17? Because we have 17 possible icons to do. So we have 17, right? We have 17 possible ones. So that's just the name I came up, number I came up with. So the first thing what I want to do is I want to make sure admin and the icon number, remember, starting at 1 plus 9, this is going to be 10. So E10 is our first one. If it does not equal empty, that means we have an icon name. So we're going to set the icon path. It's going to be based on the icon folder using a backslash and whatever the icon name is located in column E. That's the full icon path. Then I'm going to check to make sure that we do have a correct path. If the directory of the icon path does not equal empty, then we know it is correct. We have an accurate path. We can continue. So with that sheet calendar, pictures, insert, right? We probably don't need calendar because I think we've got it up here. No, we do. So calendar pictures, insert, icon path, and we give it a specific name called icon and the icon number. 
and then and then we can making sure it's got a unique number right a unique name with that unique number then what we're going to do is we're going to work with it. i just want to set it based on the left on column a setting it with a specific location and basically we're going to loop through that and create a specific just off the screen location in column a so we can display those and i'm going to set a, a macro on that called calendar booking set and that means when they select on an icon i want to make sure something happens we'll be going over that macro in just a minute when i they even select on the icon i also whether they select on the shape or whether they select on the icon i want that macro to run so we need Need to assign a macro to that icon because if we assign a macro to that icon here if I assign a macro to that icon once that icon gets duplicated and put in shape I know that the macro a lot will also get duplicated along with that so we're gonna lock the aspect ratio and we're gonna give it a specific height of 10 that's it and we're just gonna loop through so that's gonna create all the icons okay now we're gonna focus on the booking sheet right remember as I mentioned before we need to run an advanced filter I want to know all the bookings in the given month we're gonna have those results come here so the first thing we're gonna do is run that advanced filter and we're gonna determine the last row we want to clear any results inside that booking first determining the last row running our advanced filter based on the date criteria that I mentioned AR2 through AS4 that is the very important criteria right here it's going to bring those results in there once I have those results in a u2 through bc we're going to determine the last row based on au if there's less than three that means there's no data we can exit this up okay if there is data we're going to turn off application screen updating to make things a little faster I want to sort them based on two parameters first thing I want to sort them by date right on a y I want to sort them first by date here in AY and then next by time right first by date then by time so we can do that with basically sort so the first thing is by date so we're going to run that sort but what I want to do is I want to add I want to clear any existing sort and then I want to add the first key which is date by AY3 and then by time by AZ3 so we're going to run that and then of course we're going to run and apply that sort based on the range AU through BC making sure that we call out the sheet again because we're inside a with sort then what we're going to do is we're going to loop through and once they're sorted based on date I'm going to loop through every row inside those results every single row so from three to the last row I want to loop through every single one I want to put that booking ID I want to know the trip booking ID very important because and I also want to know the booking name because it is that the shape names that we're going to be based on that when we go into the calendar I need to know of course I need to know the text here this is our name of our booking and I also need to know the idea of the booking because it is we're going to put in that ID right here so to get that so we're going to extract that information I also need to know what date it is on because I need to place it on a specific day and I also need to know the position if there's four different bookings on a given day I need to make sure that they don't overlap themselves so I need to increment the top position down 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 so if there's four it depends on how many bookings on a given date okay so that's very important so we're going to need to know all that information so we need to know the booking date the from date that's going to come from AY bringing in our results here inside our trip bookings AY is going to take on the date right booking name from AW and the trip ID and AV so we're going to get all that information in here AY BA is going to be the two date if we need that we may not need that and then also I need to know the booking name in AW and I also want to know the booking type this is not order status it is booking type booking type is very important for a few reasons one booking type is going to let us know what icon to use and it's also going to know what color to use so we really need to know I need to know all about that booking type so I need to look for that inside I need to find what row it's associated with because the row is going to tell us what color the row is also going to tell us what icon to use so we need to know the row so I need to know the row of that booking where it is so to do that we're going to set the booking type based on, based on AX remember AX is going to take on that booking AX I need to know this is the booking type car hotel whatever and so on and so forth so once we have that I want to get that row as I mentioned so we're going to do or the icon number right so what I'm going to do is I want to set the icon number or icon row whatever row is it it's going to be going to look for that I'm looking inside the admin booking types I've got a named range inside the admin called book types right what am I looking for I'm looking for the booking type I'm looking in the values and I'm going to subtract out nine right why do I want that because I want the icon number I want to set the those icon numbers if the icon number is not zero then we know why why do we need that icon number because here I'll show you why right once we find that row let's say it's 
The hotel is found on row 10, right? What icon number is that, right? When I look inside our trip calendar here, we take a look at the uh, this particular one, that hotel, it's called icon one. So if it's found on row 10 and I wanna get that number, I know it's icon one. Icon one is found on row 10. So what we're gonna do is, that's why we're subtracting nine, right? It's found on row 10 here, but I don't want 10, I want one. So we need to subtract out, that'll get us our icon number. Setting our icon number. If it's not zero, we can set the booking color. We know the booking color. Now, another way we could do is probably could have gone, I would call it, uh, let's say, booking type row. The type row could be 10. That's another way to do it. But we still need the icon number, okay? So what I want to do is I want to know the color. How can I find the color? Again, we're going to add back 9 here. So this is going to give us 10. So D and 10, right? I want to extract that color. I need to know what color the user has set here. And that color is going to be based on D and whatever row it is. So I want to get the back color and put that into a variable. So we're going to determine that interior color of whatever it's found. And we're going to put that inside a variable called book color here. Only if the icon number is not zero, if it's been found. I also want to know how many, remember, I want to know how many bookings on a given day. That's really, really important, right? So if I take a look inside our trip bookings, I want to know, for example, on the third, how many bookings are on the third or how many are on the 10th, right? I need to know how many. If you take a look at the 10th, we see that there's four different bookings. So if we go inside our trip calendar and we go on the 10th, we see there's four different bookings. So I want to count that, right? So I want to take a look. I'm, we've come across that date. We know we put that date into a variable, that from date. But now I want to count it, how many are in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the day order count. And we're going to base it on a from date results. Now I've got a named range here called from date results. Let me show you that named range so we understand that. Formulas, name manager, okay? And it's going to be called from, right? So if we look at from date results, this is a dynamic name range using offset, and it's based on the results of that from date. From date results. So I've got a name range based on offset. So however long the results are, it's going to put all those dates into a name range. So now what I want to do is I want to look for a specific date in that name range, and I want to count how many instances of that date are inside that given column. So we can do that. We're going to call that the day order count. It's going to let us know how many counts are in there. It's going to use application worksheet function. We're going to use the count if, same just like we would inside a formula. And what am I going to do? I'm going to counting the from date. And I'm going to count how many from dates are inside our results. That's going to give us you know, how it's going to, include, let's see, count number of instances of a date inside our results. Now, if it's greater than 10, that means too much for one day, right? We can't have that. If it's less than 10, what I'm going to do is I'm going to split it, right? So that half and half, so I can, so basically it's less than 10. We don't have any, we don't have more than five, but if we did, right, what do we do is cut these in half. So we could put half this and half this. So we have basically five and we can have two columns. So if we have two columns of five, we can have a total of 10. That's why we set it. So the maximum is 10. If it's 10, just set it to 10. If the day order count is greater than one, I also want to keep what track of order, right? As we loop through these, as we go through the first, the second one, I want to increment so I know we got a place at the top, right? I want to keep track. Are we on one, the two, the three, or the four? I need to know because I need to keep moving the top position down, down, down. So we got to keep track of that count. So the day order count is greater than one, then the order number equals the order number plus. We're going to keep track of the order number so we know right, how many orders. So we're going to set the number of bookings in a day, how many given bookings in a specific day. As we keep track of that, it'll help that top position move down as we know which ones we're on. Okay, if the order number equals one, right, it's the first order, I want to find where that is, right? We know, I want to know that, that this belongs on the 21st. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop through all these rows. It happens very quick. So I'm going to go from, let's say, E4 all the way over to K4. Then I'm going to go down a row. Then I'm going to go from E10 all the way through K10 and so on and so forth. So we need two loops for that. One for the rows, rows four, rows 10, row 16, and so on and so forth, and one for the columns, 5 through 11. So we need to do that right here. So first thing is we're going to loop through the rows. For the calendar row equals 4 through 34. We're not going through every row. We're going to go through every sixth row. So we're going to step 6. And I also need to loop through all the columns, right, 5 to 11. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look for that date. If the calendar cells, the, the row and the column, value, if the value of these equals the from date, basically I'm looking, 
this is remember this is a date it shows 15 but it's actually a date how do we know that because of a custom format right if i change that to short date we're going to see that is actually the date right so it actually shows the date but in actuality it is a custom format and what number format is is a custom format and basically all we're going to be showing is d right we just want to show the d and that's all we're going to show in that custom format so but these are dates so if it's found if it's found then i know what column and i know what row to place it in Okay, so once it's found, if it is equal, if it is equal, it's found, we're going to set the calendar row to the calendar row. We're going to set the calendar column equal to the calendar column. And we're going to go to create order. We're going to skip, and we're going to get out of that loop. We don't need that loop. It's been found. We can go out of that. So it's going to get called something called create order. It's going to skip here. Great, but else, what if it's else? Not the first, not first booking in a day, right? So if it's not, remember, here's the first number, the first order number. If it's not, then all we need to do is simply increment the row by one. What do I mean by that? It's not, we've already found it. I just want to increment by one, by one, and one. And that's going to move that row down a little bit. The column will stay the same, right? So we can do that. So that's all we need to do here. If the order number equals, uh, if the order number equals six, then what we're going to do is, what do I mean by that? That means we're going to do five, then another column, and another five, right? So that's how we're going to update the order number. So then the calendar row equals the calendar. Basically, we're reducing the rows back to the top row if the order number equals six. But if it's less, then simply we're incrementing the rows. I want to go over that again. It's a little bit confusing. Remember, we have, we're showing four, but we could show 10. We're going to split this in half, right? If it was in half like this, right, we could do more than one. It might look something like this. If I duplicate that, it might look something like this, right? So we could do 10, right? So when we get down to the fifth, the fifth one, and we're on six already, the sixth one's going to go up top. So we need to read the rows are going to be minus whatever row is here, minus four, right? We're going to subtract the rows, and then we're going to start that column again. So that's all we need to do inside the code is simply reduce that. So if the order number equals six, calendar row equals whatever the calendar row is, minus four, I think that should be minus five, right? But, right, let me just check that. So right, we're on here, row 15, it's going to have to go back down to row, no, it's minus four. It's going to have to go back down to row 11. From 15 to 11, subtracting four out, so that is correct. So otherwise, else, we're simply increasing the row once, right? If it's not six, right, if we're on one, two, three, we're just simply increasing the row. So it goes from row 11 to 12 to 13 in the same day. Okay, good, I'm glad we got that cleared up. All right, continuing on. So now we wanna create that order, or create, I should say create booking, but okay, this came from an order, so it's okay. Order booking, the same thing. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we need to know if the calendar row equals zero, just to make sure that we have a we need the calendar row and we need the column if it if either one of those are zero for any reason we're going to skip that order okay so now what we're going to do is i'm ready to create that booking ready to create that booking shape so the first thing what we want to do is take this sample shape here called sample booking shape and we're going to duplicate it right i'm going to duplicate it and i'm going to place it directly in here so the first thing we want to do is duplicate it and give it a very specific name so we can do sample booking duplicate the word booking and the booking id and once it's been duplicated, we can work with it. But I do want to check the day order count, right? I want to check that. If the day order count, remember, I want to set the width. Remember, the width is going to be different. If the order count is up to five, it's no problem. The width can be the full length. But if the order count is greater, right, let's say we have six, six or seven or eight or nine or 10 bookings in a day, I need to make sure that that width is half of whatever the column is. So I want to set the width either to the full column or half of it. So we're going to check that. If here the day order count is greater than five then the book width is simply equal to the cells the width of that column divided by two else we're going to set it to the full width else the booking width is equal to the full width of the column right so i need to check the width of that based on that okay now also i want to set the left position now the left position if the order number is greater than five if we're already in then the left position is going to be where the left position is going to be here if it's less than five the left position is going to be here so we need to split the left position based on how many are in a day and so we can do that with the following lines of code. The booking the left position, if it's greater than five, is going to be the left position of that column plus the width 
of that fold, the width of the column divided by two. So basically it's splitting the column in two and moving over to the right. Otherwise, the left position is simply going to be the left position of the column. Okay, great. So now we've got the left position. We've got the width set up and we've got the left position set up. Now we simply need to place it. So with this new shape that we just created, the booking and the booking ID, we're going to set the left position based on the booking. We're going to set the top position based on the calendar row, right, where the date, this is where the date was found, the rows where the date was found, plus one, right? I don't want it inside the date row. I want it one below, right, which is here. So whatever the row, whatever the calendar row is, whatever row has been incrementing, it's going to be that plus one. And we want to set it on the calendar column. And then we're going to add plus one because we don't want it directly on the top. We're going to set the width based on the booking width. It was either here, right, or here. So there's two options on the booking width. But we're going to set that here. We're going to set the height as 15. We want to set text in there. It's going to be based on that booking text. Now, that booking text was already defined up here. And it's going to be based on the booking name. So I'm going to set the text there. Okay, so once we have that booking text, we can then set a macro, right? I want to set that macro on action calendar. This is... It may not be as important to do that if we set our sample, right? Notice our sample hasn't assigned the macro, but if I assign that macro to the sample, it may not be necessary to do this step because we're duplicating the sample. And if we duplicate and the sample has the, the macro already assigned, then this may not be necessary. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to set the book color. As long as the booking color doesn't equal empty, we're going to set the shape color. It's fill for color RGB equals the booking color. Set booking color. So let's put that out. Set booking color and that's going to set up that unique booking color based on the color that was found already inside that as long as that icon was found okay great now what we're going to do is we're going to set the group sheet i want to create a group of that i want to group these two shapes basically this shape here and this shape the icon those two shapes i want to create a group of it so i need a string uh, that string is going to contain both those shape names the shape name booking five and the shape name booking icon five or whatever right so i want to make sure that that i create a screen so i'm creating a string this string will help us create the group. It's going to start out, that string is going to start out with booking and booking ID. Now we're ready to add the icons, okay? If the booking type, remember the booking type does not equal empty, and the icon, we're just going to make sure that we have a booking type and we have an icon number. As long as those are not empty, then we can go ahead and we can now set the icon. So we're going to, again, take this is where that icon and the icon number come in handy we know that the dynamic number that we created based on the booking type we're going to duplicate that sample and we're going to give it a name called booking a uh, book ico and booking id that's going to create that icon once we do we can work with that icon we're going to set the left position based on the booking left and a little bit over to the right four pixels we're going to set that top position based on the same top position as we did the shape again assigning the macro with that and now we're going to complete that string so it's going to be that string whatever we created right up here plus we're going to add in a comma and we're going to add in of course we don't need the and here and the booking id and the book okay okay so that's going to add it there so now we've added the string the string is going to help us group we have all the shape names inside this single string separated by a comma. Now what we need to do is group these. So we're going to use and create a group array. It's an array. Now we've defined that group array all the way up here as an array called group array as a string with the brackets. Okay. So once we have that, we can then split it based on that comma. We're going to take that string. We're going to split it. And we're going to create that creates an array of those shape names. Once I have that array, it's very easy to group. All you need to do is set the calendar, shapes, range, group array setting a group name called booking group and the booking id this is going to create that unique name for that group of those shapes we're going to set the booking text to empty right clear out whatever and group stream to empty as we loop through all the shapes so that's it we're simply going to loop through this and then of course we're going to set the order number if the order number is greater than the day count remember we're determining how many different bookings are in a single day and we're incrementing this order one plus one plus as it goes up so once we've reached the limit equals that then we're going to set the order number to zero so as we so basically this is looping through all of the bookings in a given day once we've reached that maximum if we're already if the order number is at four and we have four different bookings in a given day then we're going to set that order number to zero so it's going to reset the order on the last on the last last order the last order of the day or the last I should say booking here I copied this from another you probably realize that already and then we're going to turn on application screen update that's it okay the last macro that we have to show you in this oops 
I'm probably not going to go over the month. We've gone over those before. Just the last macro that I'm going to show you today. The other three are simply going to previous and next in this month. We don't need to go, though. That's not that important. But I do want to do the booking calendar select. That is the macro. Remember, that's the macro we've been signing. When I click on here, I want to go directly to the shape. Right? I want to make sure that, one, I want to know the trip ID. I want to make sure that that booking here, I want to look up that booking ID, and I want to know what is the trip came from it. I know the booking ID. How do I know the booking ID? because we're attaching it to that shape name booking 11 or booking 12 this is the id that's coming with it right so the first thing what i want to do is i want to extract that into a variable okay so the booking id is going to equal to the shape name it's called the application caller and what i want to do is i want to remove the first seven characters and now if we take a look inside this this icon shape here right here we see that it's called book ico book ico b o k ico there's seven characters right and then we have the id if i remove those seven characters it's going to leave us with the id if we take a look at this shape here it's called booking also we have seven characters if i remove those seven characters so no matter whether they click on the icon or whether they click on the shape it's going to leave us with the same exact booking id and that's very important because that's why they both have seven characters in the string plus the id so when i remove those first seven characters it leaves us with the uh, booking id and we can remove those using the replace command we're basically going to take the first 11 characters and we're going to replace them with nothing what that'll do is leave us with the with the id so now what i want to do is i want to know what row if i know right let's say i know that i've extracted that and i've got the five into a variable i know it's booking and if i go in our booking list and i'm looking for booking id five right so i'm looking for this right but what i want to know is i want to know the trip id so what i need to do is i need to determine what row is this booking id found on once it's found, whatever's in located in B is our trip ID. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to take that trip ID and I'm going to place it directly inside B1. I'm going to place that booking ID and I'm going to place it directly inside B11. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to use the find command and I'm looking for the booking ID and I'm looking at for in booking IDs. And I want to extract that row. Once I know the row, as long as it's not zero using the find command, then I can take that trip ID and extract that, again, from column B in our bookings, from column B right here in our trip bookings. Extract that trip ID. Now I know the trip ID. Now I know the booking ID. Now I can load everything I need. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're ready to activate. So we're going to focus directly on the trip sheet, right? We're going to activate it here. First, we're going to set the trip, right? So I want to take B1 and I'm going to put that directly inside here. And I'm going to load that trip. I'm going to run the macro. It's going to load that trip. But I want to do one more thing, right? Once I load that trip, I also want to find in that selected row. Remember, it's going to load that trip, so all the information is going to load up. I'm going to have that ID, this error. But one thing that's not done is I want to set that selected trip row. For example, if I select on U.S. Big Trips, I want to make sure that U.S. Big Trips is selected, right? So if I go into the trip calendar and I click on, let's say, Texas, I want to make sure that U.S. Big Trips gets selected. So I want to make sure that B4 contains that 6. That's going to trigger that conditional formatting. So to do that, what we need to do is we need to find that I trip ID. And I know it's located in column D. Remember, it's column D here is where it's located, right? I want to know that it's located on row 6. That's 2. That 2. That, And remember, it's hidden. So this time, we need to use formulas because that trip ID is hidden. I want to get that row. What row is it found on? And as long as it's not zero, right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place that directly inside B4. And the trip row is going to be the B4. That's going to trigger the conditional formatting. We're doing exactly the same for bookings. In bookings, I'm going to place that booking ID directly into B11 right here. Once I know that trip ID, it's going to, I can automatically run the macro to load that booking right here, loading that booking. Then what I want to do is this time I want to look for that booking ID, but I'm going to look for it directly inside this column here, column F. And once it's found, I'm going to take whatever that row, whatever row it's found, and I'm going to take that row and I'm going to place it directly. In this case, Flyce the Text was found on row 16. I'm going to take that 16 and it's going to put it directly into B10. So we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're looking for it in F10. We're using formulas because it's hidden. We're extracting that row out. And we're going to take that row and we're going to put it directly inside, assuming it's not zero, and we're going to put it directly inside B10. And that's going to be the selected booking row. All right, very, very cool. We've gotten over the, the 
previous month all we're doing is basically changing the month and the years next month we're changing the month and possibly the years and this month all we're doing is determining the current year the current date current year and we're putting that in b11 just making sure that we have that and then we're refreshing we're each time we're going to refresh the calendar cool all right let's see we've got a few more to go we've gone over a few things application macros right setting the booking color this is very to relatively easy right when i want to set the colors i want to know on selection change when i'm inside the admin and i make a selection change i want to load this really cool uh this uh, little palette here and that's just a shape called palette right color palette so when i make a selection change now of course when i select on it i want to change that color right so that's going to take a macro now there's a macro that's assigned to this right so if i take a look inside any individual shape we see that it's a macro assigned to that we go into the assigned macros and we see it's called set booking color so that's what we're going to focus on right now set booking color basically all we need to do is take on that active cell interior color is going to take on whatever shape name the color of the shape name so we're going to take the color of that shape that we selected and we're going to color that interior cell and then also we're going to hide that color palette that color palette appears inside the admin screen on selection change right if we're inside the admin screen we're inside selection change right on school day change well that doesn't look like it's something that's interesting on selection of d i don't know where i get these d10 through d26 if we make a selection change and we want to make sure that c contains a value right i want to make sure that we have something here right if i do i want to, nothing i don't want anything to happen here unless they put something in column c then i want the color palette to show up so we want to make sure that c contains a value we're simply going to just place that color palette directly in column d and whatever row the row below right so if i put it here the row below that color palette is going to show up we can then change that right so very very easily so right right so we see how we display the color palette and now we know how we actually color the cells based on the selection of any shape inside that color palette using this macro here browsing for icon folder relatively simple nothing interesting browse for documents folder nothing interesting there here dashboard trip update now this is cool we've got some really really cool so let's put our attention to the dashboard and then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to focus on this really cool ui editor okay cool so the last thing is the dashboard right the second to last thing then the trip manager is going to be the last okay so what we have here is i've got a really cool dashboard now this is relatively simple but i want to know how do we create this really cool map right i want to know the map and i want to know the cities associated with each individual map well we can create a map based on any data and we're going to use some data that was going to be located inside our trip booking so basically what i want to know is i want to know the given cities for a specific trip so if i change this to europe i want to know in this case it's going to be states right we're going to france italy right or maybe we're going to go to hawaii and i want hawaii to show up here so how do we do that just telling us that we have some possible data with high confidence we plotted three percent of locations but that's with high confidence just letting us know that we have that okay so how do we know that we get how do we know where this well this is one of the newer features in one of the newest excels and we can do that based on some data so if we go into the trip bookings and it's going to be based on some extracted data so we want to know what that data is so we have some unique states right and i'm going to put a, basically some information here so i've got an, a, a basically an advanced filter i want to know a trip id so i want to know all of the unique states all the unique states or provinces for a specific trip right notice that if i decide to change that to europe right and we go back inside our trip booking we see now that we have france italy and switzerland right if we change it to hawaii it's only going to be hawaii so that's basically we just extracting the unique states or provinces based on that and i've also got a little space here and that's going to help us with our icon so all we need to do is just take this and along with some data although we don't really need to have any data but so why don't you use, use some blank spaces so i just use the underscore twice here and we're going to highlight this and what we're going to do is we're going to go into an insert and what i want to do is i want to insert a map called a filled map and that's just what we're going to do and here it automatically displays it so i've got to create a map just like that so now based on this data here we do that okay great so now we see the map we can see it a little bit bigger since we're going to be working with it right that's cool that displays but now i've got a little bit more information what if i want to format the data i want to add some data labels here I want to add data labels so how do i do so now we've got that underscore but i don't really want that underscore 
right? I want to format those into something a little bit different. So how do I do that? Well, if we're going to format those, when we go into the format, we can see we've got some options here. So let's go into the format here. and I want to show this one here. Now, what I want to do is inside these labels, I want to fill it with something special, right? I'm going to fill it with a picture. I want to show that icon. So here we're going to select picture or text. And then what we're going to do is we're going to insert and I'm going to click from the icon. I'm going to look for a specific icon based on a location, right? Because that's what I want to do. Location, okay? So this is the one I want to select. And I'm going to insert that. And what that's going to do is going to insert that. Now it's going to be kind of small, right? So if you increase it a little bit bigger, it'll increase it. And that's how we get it. So we could bring it. So now that's how we get this kind of cool icon. It's a little bit stretched out, but you get the idea. So that's all I had to do was display it. Now, of course, when that data changes, right? When we change, that data is going to change through a max show, which we're going to go over. When that data changes, automatically, we are going to see inside our, of course, our trip bookings here, that notice it automatically changes here. So that's all I had to do. And of course, just bring it over into the dashboard. So that's exactly what I did here. We have a chart data. And this is just letting us know a little bit messy. It'd be nice to get rid of that. Sometimes I see it when we change it. But basically, it would be nice. It doesn't always show up just sometimes. So that's automatically. So that's how we get this cool effect, right? And of course, all I did here was simply create a link to B3, right? Now let's take a look inside B3. B3 is just simply the trip name. So as I select it, I want to know the trip number. We're going to use index, right? I'm going to take a look at the index, the trip ID, B1. If we take a look at this drop down list here, and then we format the control. We see that this is linked to B1 and it's based on our trip names, right? So we know that if your B1 is one, right, trip one, trip two, I also wanna know the trip ID associated with that just to make sure, cause not always in line. Trip ID, we're simply gonna use the index based on what's in B1, right? So we're gonna need to call them one. So that's gonna get us our trip ID. If I know our trip ID, I can use indexing the trip name based on whatever's in B1 or the trip row right here. And that is automatically going to get us our indexing the trip name based on the row that's associated with it. And that of course will get us our trip name. If I know our trip name, I can then create a text box here that's linked to our tech name and that's going to get so that way our name is dynamic based on whatever we select here based on that very very cool that's a really cool technique and now what do we have we've got expenses here of course i'm just using an advanced filter expenses here we are also going to create an advanced filter right we want to know all the expenses that are associated with that now if we take a look inside trip bookings here i want to have some unique booking types here and some expenses that are so located on that all right so let's take a look inside the macro how we create this and then of course we're going to get into a little bit on the charts Okay, and that macro is right here called dashboard trip update. So it's a single macro. That macro is tied to this. So that means every time we make a change to this particular here box here, I've assigned the macro. It is that macro called trip update. So it is this macro that's automatically tied to any change when we make that change. To, to mention the last row and last results row, right? We're going to clear any contents based on the bookings, right? We're really focused on the bookings because that's where all of our data is going to come from. So I want to clear, make sure to clear any data. I'm going to focus on BR through BS. Now, BR through BS, if we look down here, we've got some data all the way over here, and that's going to be used for our unique days, and that's going to be for another graph, but I want to clear that out as well. So once we clear that out, I want to determine the last row. We're going to, first thing I want to do, making sure that we have data, is get the unique for the state. I want all the unique states or provinces or countries within that specific trip ID, right? So we're going to use an advanced filter, of course, for that, like we do always. And we're going to focus on that unique criteria. Now, if we take a look inside that, I want to know, let's go right here, this trip ID here, right? This is going to come directly from the dashboard. Remember, I said I needed to get that trip ID inside a specific cell in our dashboard. And we did it right here inside B2. We got it based on the select one. So we know that trip ID is located in B2. If I know, let's, we should, we, you can probably get it, right? You know that that's B2, even if we don't show the headings. I was kind of limited in space, so I was hiding the headings. So we know that that's in B2, okay? 
we'll hide it because I think it looks better without that. But we know that's B2. Okay, so if I link to that, and I use that as a criteria inside our advanced filter, so we know that we can get that. And I also want to make sure that we don't have any blanks. So I want to, wherever state or province is not blank. So we're going to, that criteria is going to be BE2 through BF3. And then I want those results to come in here. These underscores are just simply helpful for our chart, okay? So that's it. That's all I want, those unique states. So that's going to bring those results directly inside BH. All that's going to do, because our chart's already created, so that's all we need to do to update our chart. This update our chart, simply put. Now what I want to do is booking types. I want to know the booking types. Why is booking types important? Well, I know that because I want to get all of the total expenses based on, I want to know how much in tours, how much in meals, and I want to create this donut chart. And I would be based on some very important information. So where's that going to be based on? Well, that's going to be based on some data, right? Where's that data is going to be located? It's going to be located inside our trip booking. So I want to know all the unique booking types and I want to get a total and I want those to appear right here. So that's going to, those results are going to come directly from there. So I want also to get those unique booking types. Of course, the same original data, the same criteria, but this time I want the booking types to come into BJ2, right? So then what I want to do, once I have those booking types, I have all the unique booking types for a specific trip. I'm going to determine the last row based on this row, based on column BJ. Once I know the last row, I want to create a formula that's going to create all the totals based on this type and based on this specific trip ID. So we're going to create a formula, and that formula is going to be called sum ifs. We're going to booking costs. I want to know the total booking costs based on a very specific booking type in BJ3, right? Only for that. And I also want to know based on booking type, trip ID, excuse me, booking type is going to be BJ3. So that booking type is going to be dynamic. Dynamic. As the formula goes down, it's going to be down here. However, the trip ID is very fixed to BE3, very fixed here, right? Only for that trip. That's why it is absolute using the dollar signs, whereas the, the booking type is dynamic based on whatever row we're on. Okay, so that means as I bring down this formula, I can clear this all out very easily, right? And all I need to do is just simply update that dashboard. Notice the data is gone, right? That's fine, right? So all we need to do is just update that, and you need to see the formulas are going to be automatically brought back down because those formulas are going to be brought down using the macro. So going back into the trip bookings, we see them brought right back up here. This formula is going to be copied down. So we're going to determine that last row based on column BJ. If it's less than three, we're going to go to no types. If it's not, I'm going to bring down those formulas. That formula is located in BK2. I'm going to take that formula and just bring it down all the way. And we can do that with a formula to formula exchange right here. So BK3 through BK in the last result formula equals BK2. Bring down those formulas. Once I bring down those formulas, our existing chart will automatically update. This chart data will automatically update. So if we see and take a look inside this chart data, we're going to see it's automatic. Let's focus on that. That's the one I want. So we're going to select it, and we see that it's automatically based on that information, right? based on dynamically on that. Okay, very, very cool. So we've got that. We understand how that updates. And of course, we've got just a simple picture back here. It's kind of a transparency using a little bit of the same thing here. Okay, great. Now that covers that. But what about I want to get the number of days in a province, right? How many given days in a specific state are we going to? So here we're going to run an advanced filter. Also, we're having the same exact criteria. But this time we want the results in BM through BO2. So let's take a look inside the bookings here. And we have the results coming from BM. Here we want, I want to know all the states, right? I want to write, and I want to know the from and to dates, right? So I want to create this data, right? And so I want to know all the states or provinces, all everything in any given trip ID, right? So we're going to use this here, again, same criteria. And this time I want to know how many days, right? So I want a formula. I want to bring a formula down here. So I've just put in a formula here. I'm bringing that formula down. Actually, I forgot to put that formula in. Probably just put it down here. That might be helpful. Okay, so basically I want to, but we should determine the last row. Put that formula up here. You guys can do that. Total unique days. Oh, I remember what I did. So that's going to help us. Total unique days. And then we have it here. So that's fine. So what I'm going to do is bring the data over. Then what I want to do is I want to get the unique. I only want a list of uniques. And I want to put those uniques here. Then we're going to do is we're going to extract the days. Here's the formula here. That's sufficient. Here's the formula here. So I'm going to extract all the days based on that because we've already, I just want to make sure that formula extends down. Then what I want to do is I want to bring another formula down that's going to determine the total days that we're spending in a given state. 
here, here, or territory, right? So that's all we're going to do inside here. So that we do in a macro. So our results are coming through BM2. Then we're going to do is determine the last results row here based on BH, right? I need to know the last results row here. And then we know the last results row here. So what I want to do is run and clear it out. So we're determining that. Now what I want to do is actually we don't need this here because we've already determined the last results row above. So we've already got the unique states, right? That one we don't need. We've already determined it up here. We know how many unique, right? I know already because I've got them here. I know that all I need to do is bring these over here. And then all I need to do is just extract the data, right? I really need this data. That's what I really need. We also, all I need to do is bring this over here from BR. So that's just what we did inside here. BR3 through BR in the last results row, we've already determined that up here, is equal to BH. So what does that mean? That means just simply taking these states, bring them here from here, bringing them over because we already have them. Then what we want to do is determine the how many formulas. We've got a formula here that's going to track down how many dates. So we're going to sum all the dates based on a given state. So I want to know how many. So we got to, you can use sum if here. We're going to sum. What are we summing? I'm going to sum in the range here, BM. That's what I want to know. And our criteria is BA. So our criteria is going to go down, down, down. Then what we're going to do is our sum range is simply going to be BP through B19. So that's going to keep it there. So that's simply going to sum all the days. Then all I did was create a data. So we're going to bring that. So this brings down our unique states here. This brings down our formula. Our last row won't change. So this brings down our formula. Then we have all the days. Then all I did is just simply create a chart based on this. Very simple inside the dashboard. I created this little uh, bar chart here, and then it's just based on those days. So that's all it is. So if we select the data, we see that that data is based on this days here. That's all it is. Very cool. Okay, lastly, we have expenses by type, and then we're going to get to our trip manager custom UI here. So expenses by type, right? I want to know how many expenses by type. We have that already, so all I do is just use a picture tool. Now, I've got the information here inside our bookings, right? Here, we've got the expenses here, but what I want to do is just create a picture tool. So I created this picture tool. Of course, to do that, right, I created a, a name range called trip cost detail. If we go into the formulas, name manager, and we look into trip cost detail we see something here i've got a dynamic name range based on this data called trip cost detail so as it increases it'll increase then what i did is i used the camera tool to do that so we've got trip cost detail here i'm going to copy that then i use the camera tool what's the camera tool well, it's this tool right here here you can find that in your camera and i'm just going to draw it anywhere and that's no link to pay so let's uh, do it here let's do that here camera tool okay there we go that's good enough i like that here it is but if you want it but we want it dynamic so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do equals and then i'm going to paste in that link here that trip what was it called trip cost detail here that's the one i want that way this picture is going to be dynamic and then just simply copy this and paste it into our dashboard just paste it right here and then i just added a total trip cost here and here so that total trip cost is here and to be based on bl2 now let's take a look inside bl2 and we see that we've got a, just a formula here based on their total trip cost it's just simply the sum of all of this and it's just linked to that so that's all we did is just use a text box and linked it to that okay very very cool well we've covered a lot now the last thing is how do we create this really cool notice that i've been using the sheets but we can also use this little i'm going to drop this down here so we can see it here and then we can show the cup so how do we create this admin calendar another really cool way, new booking trips and dashboard how do we create this custom toolbar well very cool we're going to use a tool called the office ribbon you know this is called office ribbon editor this is a really cool tool now you can download this free over the internet or i'm also going to include it um, on our patreon but it is a free application i didn't create it but i'll make sure that it's in the resources for our patreon members and basically all we need to do is simply open a workbook right any workbook and then we can assign something so what i'm going to do is i'm going to open that trip manager workbook that we're working on and I'm going to click there. And so basically once inside this workbook, now, of course, I've already added it, but I'll show you how to do that, right? 
So we can add pictures, right? I've added these little icons. Those are going to help us. So if you want to add more, all we need to do is just add some. So let's go ahead, go ahead and open this editor up here. Okay, so we've got some custom code. So we can insert icons. It'll just browse for our icons, right? If we have any icons, we can browse for icons, making sure that they're PNG or transparent, making sure that they're icons. So we can insert any ones, okay? And what that's going to do is going to put them down here. Then what we're going to do is we're going to create some code. Now we can create a custom sample code, right? If you don't know what to create, you can start out with a sample. Let's say you want to add some insert sample code. You can do that too, right? If you want to insert some sample code, because it's kind of a little bit complicated, you can do that. You can insert some custom UI parts. So if you want to do that, you can click on here, insert, and then you can do custom UI or custom pro or sample XML. So this is kind of nice. You get some sample code. So right now we can do a custom outspace, a custom tab. We're on a custom tab. It'll say, do you want to insert custom tab in your current? If you want to click yes, right? And what that's going to do is just insert a custom tab. So you would normally not have that, right? Of course that. But so that's going to do it. That's all we need to do. We don't need to do that, right? So let's say you had nothing here. You can insert some custom. Then what we're going to do is we're going to customize it. And we're going to customize it, sort it. So the first thing we're going to do is going to get this automatic, this custom 2009, this custom UI. Then what we want to do is we start ribbon from scratch. False, that's automatic. We want to create some tabs. I want to create a brand new tab. And I'm going to give it a unique tab called Trip Manager. This is the ID. It must be unique. For every single tab, you must have a unique ID. Then you want to give it a label called Trip Manager. That is the same label that's called here, Trip Manager. So if I were to change it there in the XML. Now keep this in mind that you cannot save it if your workbook is saved, right? So if I want to make changes here and I want to save it, it's going to tell me this process cannot be done. Why is that? Because this is open. So we want to make sure that this is closed, this workbook is closed, while we're saving changes for our XML, right? While we're saving. So we're going to give it a very, very specific name, right? Unique name so that we can see it. Then we want to create a group. Again, I want a unique group. Maybe we want it called custom group. And I want to give it a group called trip manager, right? So that means that, that all your buttons can be within a group. Notice that these, these are all grouped together and it's called trip manager. See, I've got one group and it's called trip manager. Okay, then I have individual buttons on a given trip. So let's take a look inside those individual buttons. We've created the custom group. Again, we need to have a unique ID for the group and we have a unique label. What I want to do is I want to create individual buttons, right? And again, every individual button, we've got five of them, have a specific, unique, different ID. This one's called dashboard, button, trip button. So these are not visible. These are just IDs that separate them. These labels, I do want to give them a very clear label. This one's called dashboard, trips, new booking, calendar, and admin. So each one has a label. And that, of course, is the same label that we get here, dashboard, trips, new booking, calendar, and admin. So once we have that, right, we've gotten our names. I keep switching back to this one because I keep thinking. Okay, no worries. So we're back on here. So what I want to do is make sure that it is a large size. Each one's a large size. And I want to assign a macro to each one of them, a unique macro to each one of them. Those macros are already located. Now we can go to the VBA, are located already inside here. If we take a look inside our app, I've got individual macros for each one of them located down here. So we want to make sure that we have something called go to dashboard. This is the macro and it's control as ribbon. Okay, we've done two different ribbon. Probably don't need this one, but my ribbon has ribbon UI. Okay, that's important. And then what we're going to be doing is we're going to set the ribbon to ribbon, making sure that on the ribbon load, it's going to load up that ribbon. Copy and paste my code, no problem. Then what we want to do is so we want to give a unique macro. For example, go to dashboard. All we're going to do is simply activate that. For go to trip, we're just going to activate that. So we've given it a unique macro name. It is this macro name that also must be assigned on this XML called on action, right? So basically each one we're doing. And then also we want to assign a, a picture with it, right? And that picture is the same name as this picture. Make sure they're the same. Schedule, right? So we have schedule here, right? Even though it's called calendar, right? Make sure the image name here is the same as the ones you've uploaded, right? If you want to change it, you can double click on that. Or you can, oh, this is really cool. You can see that. I like that. This is a kind of a cool office uh, ribbon. There's many different variations, but I really like this one. You've got some cool features on this one. Okay, so we want to make sure the image names are very, very exactly the same as what we've already uploaded here. 
Once we have that, we want to check to make sure that the code is correct. We're going to click validate and we can say custom is well formatted. Okay, so we know that everything is set up right. Once we've set everything up right, we've assigned our macros and unique macros. We've given it very unique buttons. That's all we have to do here. Saving and closing. Remember, you cannot save it unless the workbook is open. So make sure you save your workbook in your workbook and you close it. Then you save your workbook here. So then you save it. Okay, now when we open it up, automatically we'll get these and we get these really cool mac macros automatically here so that's it and that's all i've done inside there so i've given a brand the only difference is um on the add new booking we're activating the cheap and then we're running the booking new for the calendar i decided to run the macro to refresh the calendar when we run the macro so that is it wow this is an incredible training in this training i showed you how to use this create this really cool ui editor right if you want this application it'll be inside the resources along with the icons and of course we did a lot we had this really cool trips i showed you how to create brand new trips along with multiple bookings unlimited bookings per trip and of course how to add documents to those individual whether they're word pdf picture or whatever and how to show those and space those and preview them along with opening and deleting those individual documents showing you how to create this really cool schedule of course with dynamic colors dynamic icons really really cool an amazing dashboard with a really really cool dynamic map right to be able to show wherever it is just make sure you have your information correct along with some really cool data information that we extracted through of course advanced filters and we have that showing all about our trip data. It's been an incredible training. Thanks so much. If you like supporting us, don't forget to click the like, subscribe to our channel, click the notifications bell. And of course, we will see you next week for a brand new training. Thanks so much.